20 games with one tie, but they've not met in seven years. And Vanderbilt has not won a ball game in some time. 1951, that's the last time that LSU lost to Vanderbilt. 44-year-old George McIntyre, a deacon is Baptist Church and in his coaching fraternity, coach of the year two years ago. His team has won the toss and elected to kick off to Bill Arnsberger's group, the Tigers of LSU. The rain continues to come down. And the man to kick off is a man that George McIntyre said, if we need a 70-yard field goal, I would try it with this man, Ricky <laughs> Anderson. Kick off to Gary James and Herman Fontenot. How do you like this lineup? Oh, this is what the LSU players were talking about, Paul. They don't know their blocking assignments. They all kind of scramble around there. But out here they come. And Anderson puts the ball in play along the ground, hoping perhaps for a fumble on the ball. It is not fumbled. Brought back by Chris Cruz. And it'll be first and ten for LSU. LSU will start Jeff Wickersham, number five at quarterback. Gary James, 33, the tailback. He moves around. Dalton Hilliard, the running back. They have no fullbacks, number 21. Fontenot, 40. The All-American Eric Martin, 41, the split end and flanker. Mitch Andrews, number 83, the tight end. Harold and Smith, the tackles. Gore and Langford, the guards. And Campbell, the center. And here's Wickersham with lots of time and hitting across the middle to Ratchin. And Ratchin is dragged down about near midfield by Steve McCoy, the middle linebacker. Ratchin, a starter over Gary James, a sophomore to Houston, Texas, picks up Wickersham's first throw. First down for Vanderbilt. Stall 88, Wade 90, Jordan 99, Wyndham 89, the front four, Cartwright 64, McCoy 56, Fitz 22, the linebackers, Sykes 4, Anderson 28, the corners, Johnson and Young 17 and 32 are the deep men, and Bob Ia, the referee, has called for time for a moment. And I'm not sure whether they're looking for a dry football or whether they're going to place the sticks. But while they do this, Paul, let's say that Robert I.A. is the referee. The umpire is Harold Johnson. George Morris is the linesman. The line judge is Richard Long. John Fleming, the field judge. Back judge is Ted Thomas. And the electric clock operator is Don Shanks. Jim, the problem is with the clock. The clock says 7.46 and counting, and the game just started. That's a quick first quarter. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Ratchin, not known as a pass catcher, but as an executive of Payne Weber in more than 285 offices nationwide. Thank you, Payne Weber. Well, they got the clock okay now. And it shows 14.35 to go. First down LSU at their own 49. Wickersham, and here's Hillian with his first running play of the night. And he's hit as he gets to the 49-yard line and hit hard by Richard Stahl, making his first start tonight, a freshman out of Brentwood, Tennessee, and only weighs 210. A gain of three, second down seven. So let's go back to that first play. I thought it was an excellent call coming out in the rain, knowing that they have the great runners in the backfield and throw the ball, which will set up the run. Up, oh, Wickersham drops the football and drops on the football at the 48. It'll be third down 11. And by the way, Gary James, number 33, has checked in the lineup. And now, Raji McGee comes in. He is a freshman, and he's replacing the tight end, Mitch Andrews. McGee, out of Bocalusa, has 4-5 speed. No tight end, three wide receivers, third and 11. And Wickersham back to throw. Oh, look at the time. He's got it. He's got a man wide open, and that is McGee. Check that point at all, number 40, not 80. First down in any event at the 37. Tim Johnson, number 17, led the tackle. There's Fontenot out of Beaumont, Texas. Well, anybody can be a great passer. Not saying anything against away from Wickersham, but look at the time he has, Jim, and look at the lane that's opened up so he can catch Fontenot, number 40, downfield. When you have that kind of time, you're going to complete passes, and you're going to find people open. Andrews back in. LSU's had the ball all the way. No score yet. Across the middle, they've got Andrews, and Andrews is back down at the 27-yard line. 
Reeves McIntyre looking on his team was bumped last week by Tulane after having won their first four games in a row. You know, when you look at Wickersham, that's the second time in a row he went back to pass. And what's happening, the offensive line, and I don't know whether this is by design or not, but they're opening up an alleyway for him to take a look at his intended receivers. And that time it was Andrews. They picked up nine yards. Second down and one, and Craig Rathjen has come in number 13, replacing Kerry James. And out here is McGee, and McGee has got the first down and down to the 19-yard line. First down, LSU. 12.35 to go, first quarter, no score. LSU took the kickoff and has had it ever since. Let's take a oh, We're looking at this offensive line blocking. Watch this. It's a little fake in the backfield and a slip screen to the outside. But look at where the Vanderbilt defensive linemen are on the line of scrimmage. Mark the ball at the 20-yard line. Montano wide to the right. Eric Martin, the All-American, they haven't thrown to him yet tonight, is to the left. And the ball is handed off to Hilliard, and Hilliard picks up several yards across the middle, down to about the 17-yard line. It is second down and seven, and as you can see, the man down at the bottom is John Wyndham, the junior out of Brentwood, Tennessee. Ball at the 17-yard line. Remarkable, the rain continues to come down not nearly as hard as what it was at game time. Now they put Martin and Fontano both to the right. This is the first time they've done that. And they're going to throw out there to Fontano. Fontano slips and is thrown down at the 14-yard line. The play made on him over there by Manuel Young, 32, and Kermit Sykes, number four. But the, the team blocks so well that they make it look like a run play, and they put the two wide receivers to the outside. But watch at the blocking at the line of scrimmage. Again, no problem for Wickersham. But when they throw this ball to Fontenot on the outside, they've got Eric Martin, who blocks the inside man as soon as the pass is thrown. They're down at four from the 14-yard line. Go, Gary James setting up as a flanker to the right. Wickersham puts it into the end zone and overthrows the man it was intended for in the end zone, Gary James. But that is the first time that Wickersham has been rushed. He has been rushed, but Dalton here is going to step up the halfback. He steps up in front. Wickersham does not have a lot of time to throw the ball, but as you said, Jimmy, he had Gary James wide open downfield, and he paid, for, paid the price on the blitz. Juan Batanzas out of Mexico City, a senior, will try a 31-yard field goal. <laughs> he is 7 for 11 field goal-wise on the young year. And from 31 yards out, Batanzas has it, and LSU goes into the lead. Two left. And Tonsos gets the first points of the ball for LSU. They went 70 yards. And that is Weatherspoon picking up the ball at the seventh. Weatherspoon across the 20. And now for the first time tonight, we will see Kurt Page number 12, Keith Edwards number 5, Charles Woods 27 in the backfield. Chuck Scott, the All-American 46. Joe Kelly, number six, the split end. The tight end is Jim Pop, number 81. Monaco and Denson are the tackles. Walford and Herman, the guards, and Fletcher at center. Jim Drawley is ill. Fletcher's moved from tackle to center. Denson takes over for Fletcher at right tackle. Triple formation right off the top. And here's Kurt Page. He has time, and he's got Keith Edwards, and Edwards picks up seven or eight yards to the 29. With Sean Burks, number 57, the linebacker makes the stop. Tommy Clapp, 97. Henry Thomas, 96. Carl Wilson, 72, the front three for LSU. Dubrock, 44. Burks, 57. Chapman, 37. And Michael Brooks, he's a good one, 94. The linebackers, Gidry, 27. Jefferson, 12. The corners, they old. Uh, Jeffrey Dale, number four, and the All-American Lippert Hobley, 29, the safeties. Second and three, and there goes the man who carries the ball all the time, and that is Carl Woods, and Woods, I do not believe, has got the first down. Submarine as he hit the line of scrimmage. Carl is a sophomore to Gallatin, Tennessee, and they have hung on him a nickname that I will tell you what it is and then I'm going to drop it. They call him Goo Baby. That's it. I'll just put that in there. <laughs> I'm going to call him Carl. That's right. Third down and short. 3 nothing LSU. 9.50 to go first quarter. In the rain at Baton Rouge. You would expect Woods and Woods has got the ball and down he goes. 
Ricky Chapman, the inside linebacker, number 37, the senior out of Winfield, made the stop, and Vanderbilt has to kick up the ball. Ricky Chapman, the inside linebacker. All right, let's just take a look at the offensive line blocking right there. That's not bad, but Ricky Chapman, the linebacker, gets through. Nobody blocks him. He brings Carl Woods down. All right, look at, look at Carl Woods. He's looking to the outside for a block. All of a sudden, there's a purple shirt, and that's Mr. Chapman. Now one of the best punters in America, averaging nearly 50 yards a punt, Ricky Anderson, to kick the ball away to Norman Jefferson. He can kick this football and kicks this football. Look at Jefferson backpedaling inside the 15. He's all the way back to the 10. And in trouble. LSU is down at about the 12. 8.50 to go with the first quarter Tigers Stadium. Nebraska outscored Missouri by 10. Washington over Stanford. Ohio State came from behind to beat Illinois. And Alabama shut out Penn State. Down at Brian Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. It is raining. The ball is on the 12-yard line, let's call it. First down. Jeff Wickersham, his team leads by three. And off Hilliard gets out to the 15-yard line, and that is about all. Tackle made by Scott Anderson, number 65, in for the first time, a junior out of Sparta, Tennessee. And now James will replace Hilliard in the background, in the backfield. Eric Martin, Herm Fontenot come both to the left. We've seen them both to the right side. This is the first time we've seen them both to the left side. On second and long, about seven. Ratson is in the backfield. That is James carrying the ball for the first time, and not very far, is he? Looked like Steve Wade, the junior out of Chattanooga, made the stop. And now it is third and long for LSU. 7.55 to go in this 3-0 game first quarter. Now we got James and Hilliard back in the same backfield. Ratson comes out. Neither team has lost a game in the Southeastern Conference. Neither team won one last year. Over the middle, and there is Andrews again, and he's got the first down. Second catch of the night for Mitch Andrews. Steve Wade peeled back to make the stop. Put the ball at the 31. Jim, what's happening is Vanderbilt is so worried about the two outside players, Martin and Fontenot, that they're leaving the tight end, Andrews, in the middle, trying to be covered by a linebacker. That's not happening. On the road to the right, Martin, they've not thrown to him. I'll say it again for the left. He leads the club and catches with 20. And here comes Hilliard, and he's got blocking in front of him. He turns the corner, and it's right down. As he picks up yet another first down, chased out of bounds by Manuel Young. They'll mark the ball at the 42. Dalton Hughes comes to the outside. Fritz is the man, I think, that gets him on the outside, number 22. If he does not tackle him right there, you see 22? He's there. Young is also there. And if he does not, if they don't stop him, Jim, he's turned the corner and he's gone. That field absorbs the water very well. Remember, this drive started on the 12-yard line. Now, James gets a chance. Hurdles one man and down he goes with Steve McCoy, the middle linebacker, taking him down along with Scott Anderson. And Armin Fitz was over there also, Amando Fitz. Fitz is there. John Harrell, number 70, blocks Fitz. Fitz not only gets blocked, now watch. When James goes over the top, watch what Fitz does. He comes back up off the block and makes the tackle. Great defense. Ball at the 49-yard line. Third down and three to go. And Hilliard tries for the first down. Let's see if they give it to him or not. If he gets to the 47, the nose of the ball across it, he should have the first down. Chris okay. Gaines, the freshman out of, I love this name, Chris Gaines, the freshman out of Old Hickory, Tennessee. <laughs> That's first down. That's what they say. LSU leading by three. Has moved again into Vanderbilt territory. Vanderbilt shocked last week by Tulane when Page was intercepted four times. LSU did not play last week. Here's Hilliard darting, dancing as he is, gets inside the 45-yard line. And Scott Anderson, the junior, playing in place of Carl Jordan, 
the tackle who is a leading down lineman tackler made the stop again. And you wonder sometimes why John Harrell, number 70, the left tackle, pulls on that toss. Well, that, that's dictated by the defensive alignment. That means that the guard cannot get out. He must stay, and the tackle can get out and get on the linebacker. And James goes down the line with Richard Stahl, 88, hanging on. And you can take out a little help from Chris Gaines, a freshman. Lots of excitement about this as we heard the coaches say as we began our show they like to say there's no undue pressure but let's face it LSU might be considered one of the favorites one of the favorites to win the Southeastern Conference title Vanderbilt is off to its best start in 37 years and is taking a back seat to no one third down and two to go Rickards all pounding all their five Defending over there, slipped and Fontenot is fighting on the wrestling out of by Clement Sykes. But Sykes slipped down as he tried to get up to Fontenot. No go. First down inside the 15 LSU. Jim, I have to believe that this is an audible. When you see Fontenot out there on Kermit Sykes, number four, all by himself, you watch now. Wickersham out to the outside. Wickersham hits him. And, and a good play by Sykes because he did slip down. But watch, he keeps... Fontenot in front of him where he can make the tackle, give up the yardage, but don't give up the touchdown. Ball is at the 18-yard line. Martin right, Fontenot left, first down. And going straight ahead is Gary James. They like to move him around. Perhaps we've not done the best job because he hasn't been in that much of explaining where they put Gary James. What's your guess as good as mine, where he's going to line up. Well, Gary James, we talked about it at the beginning of the show, that there are, there's not a fullback on this team. Gary James, even though he's the bigger of the two backs, he is one or 202 pounds, Dalton Hilliard 189. But Gary James, they like to get him out in the pass pattern. When he's running the ball, Hilliard's blocking. When Hilliard's running the ball, he's blocking, vice versa. Second down, five to go. And running with the football is Gary James. James inside the five and out of bounds at the one foot line. They just did not make it, and it's first and goal to go. And it has been all LSU thus far. The fastest man on the team, Gary James. But watch what he does. When he sees the hole, it's a little delayed draw. When he breaks to the outside, now it's speed. It's all speed. That's Fitz, number 22, trying to get to him. No way. He gets knocked out of bounds inside the one. Look at this. He's looking. Uh, Should have had it. Well, maybe he'll get the ball back and get it. You'll wonder if he'll give it to Gary since he didn't get it before. They give it to him this time, and a flag goes down, and he doesn't get it. That so often happens in collegiate ball especially that you give the ball to the man who almost made it but didn't quite. And Vanderbilt stacked him up in our first flag of the ball game. And what you're saying is the defense pretty much guesses that he is going to get the ball and they overload to his side. Wickersham now 7 of 8 for 88 yards. There's Robert I.A., our referee, talking things over with Vanderbilt Steve McCoy. Is it motion? Was he too anxious? Or is it holding? Flag down. Nope. No flag. They have... <laughs> the play stands as it is, so there's no flag. I like that action, though. You pick up the flag, you throw it back on the ground, and wave it off. Well, that should make it second down and move the ball outside the one. Almost the same offensive set. They send Gary James outside this time, but he's going to make it easily. James scores his fifth touchdown rushing of the year and his sixth overall. Tim Johnson, the strong safety, number 72, has a, or 17, has a chance to get Gary James. Watch. And he hits him in the right spot, right around the leg. But watch the power of Gary James and the balance. That's a touchdown. Tangos comes on to attempt the extra point. Vanderbilt hasn't had the ball too often thus far. A rainy night in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but it's not raining on the Bengals thus far. Gary James has just scored. It's 10-0, and Matt DeFrank will kick it off to Vanderbilt. We'll see how the fine Vanderbilt offense 
is as they try to get going. Evan Crawford is told by Kenny Weatherspoon to stay right in the end zone and come on back out to the 20. Tim Johnson coming up, but I want you to watch the effort of James. Not only the balance, such strong legs. Take a look at the size of his legs. That's touchdown. There's Gary James. And he is a junior out of Gretna, which is just across the river from New Orleans. And now we see Ardell Fuller for the first time as a wide receiver split wide to the left. Pop the tight end is split wide to the right. And Kirk Page is going to throw him first down to the 20-yard line. And under throws his intended receiver, who's Chuck Scott, the All-American, senior out of Maitland, Florida. Chuck Scott is being covered by number four, Jeffrey Dale. And that's the one man that the coach McIntyre told us about that they were afraid of. Jeffrey Dale, number four, watch. He is all over Chuck Scott right there. The ball is thrown behind him. No chance for Scott to get the ball, but Dale was there. Second down, 10. Fuller comes to the right, and Scott goes to the left. And Page may be checking off of the line of scrimmage. Page fires the ball out again under thrown. And this time intended for Ardell Fuller, the senior out of Gaffney, South Carolina. And it is third down and 10, and Kirk Page and company had better get something going, because each time LSU has had the football, they have scored. One of his favorite targets, number five, Keith Edwards, came out of the backfield. Dugrock, number 44, is a strong side linebacker. Hit him right at the line of scrimmage and then ran with him. There, I'm not going to let Edwards get out of the backfield. Well, left and Scott looks like he's a little confused to where he's to set up right, but now he's ready. And Page. Heading up, and the ball is batted away. They tried to get the ball to Carl Woods, but Carl Woods in number 72, the sophomore of Baton Rouge, came in and batted the ball into the end zone. Carl Wilson times this. Now watch. Page has really no place to throw the ball downfield. He's going to try and dump it out to Woods to the outside. But watch what Wilson does. Waits till the last second, then jumps up in his face. Page that can't do a thing. I remember Vanderbilt has an outstanding offense. They've been averaging better than 28 points a game. They have none so far. Ricky Anderson drills this. It'll be taken by Norman Jefferson at the 30. The wall is on this side, and Jefferson is finally dragged down. Dragged down by Tim Johnson, the sophomore of Fayetteville, Tennessee, number 17, the strong safety. But LSU has outstanding field position. Watch this on the left-hand side of your screen. Watch Carl Wilson. At the last second, he times the ball perfectly. Keeping his eye on the ball, knocks it. You see Woods to the outside. Linebackers are not close. Defensive end saves the play. First down, midfield, LSU, 3.33 to go, first quarter, and it's been all the time. And off Hillier, not much, you know they've done a good job tonight, really, with the exception of that one outstanding run by Gary James of bottling up Hilliard and James. Hilliard is the man who's averaging 116 yards plus per ball game, and he's not getting much thus far tonight. George McIntyre, however, has to be concerned. His team has fallen behind by 10. And the Tigers are looking strong. Fontano goes to the right. Across the middle, up, and that looks like Hilliard catching the ball, and Cartwright put him down. Hilliard out of the backfield. Steve Wade, the left tackle, number 90. Watch this. Goes through the blocker, Langford, and he's right there in the face of Wickersham. And Glenn Holt is in the ball game for the first time. Number 87, a freshman out of Miami, Florida. It is third down and five to go from the field. A 45-yard line. Major Park. With time, and he gets the ball out here. That's the first down to Rod. Bono gets away. That is dragged out. Almost had him down, and he broke away from Sykes. All right, watch the defensive line now. See if there's any penetration, Jim. Not much, a little bit, but Wickersham has time to throw the ball. Here's Fontenot. Now, Sykes is going to come up number four to make the play. 
He got a latch on. He's going for the football, trying to strip the ball away. His own man knocks him away from the ball. And there's Fondo picks up an extra two ball yards. Arizona, 36 yard out. Ricky Sam Troy on first down and delivers across the middle. And look out! Touchdown! Raji McGee, the freshman out of Okaloosa, beat Kermit Sykes. LSU is on a tear. 36 yard score. a 10th catch, but that's his first collegiate touchdown. And Jim, this ball was thrown on the money, but you have to give credit to McGee, first of all, because of the total concentration on the ball. He had defenders all over him and in his eyes, and he still made the catch. And Tanzos will tap the extra point. He's got four points so far tonight himself. And make it five. And it is 17 to nothing. 1.55 to go in the first quarter. All right, now witness him again. Look at the time he has, and he's looking downfield. But watch this catch. In his eyes, that's Sykes, number four. His hands up in the air. Total concentration by McGee. Well, I wonder whether or not. Well, let's look at it again. Here it is. The pass is right on target. Sykes is there. But watch McGee. See the hand up in his face? Never lost sight of the football. Let it hit him in the chest and played it off his chest. I started to wonder about who's going to be number one. I guess Texas, since they did not lose, or is it going to be Oklahoma, since they didn't lose either today? 15 all tie. In any event, you and I, next Saturday night, will see mighty Oklahoma at Iowa State. Our start time, the usual 7.30 Eastern time. I don't think Iowa State, Jim, wants to see Oklahoma coming off a tie. <laughs> Especially since they're limping after being beaten by Colorado this afternoon themselves. Right now, Vanderbilt... One of the best offensive teams in the country has zipped to show in the first quarter. And Kirk Page and company haven't gotten anything going. And with that slippery ball, Page, remember, on the last series of ball uh, downs, under through his receivers on two occasions. Not to Frank to kick off again. His third. Crawford over here watching the ball go out of bounds and sort of move it back five. Once this game is over, Paul and I, of course, will be picking from each team a Chevrolet player of the game, and $1,000 will go to that school's general scholarship fund in the name of the player for each team. Move the ball back five yards. There's the Frank from Fort Walton, Florida. Jim, that showed heads up play by Crawford. Ever Crawford that time because he had the tendency to, to run to the sidelines, looking at the ball concentration, not knowing where the kicking team is, but he knew he was close to the sidelines, let the ball go out of bounds. There's Wickersham. They're not bad statistics in the rain, are they? 10 of 11. Touchdown, no interceptions, 135 yards. And remember, he is already past Burt Jones in the all time passing annals of LSU. Burt Jones is a guest of the press box tonight, and is only behind Alan Risher. And Wickersham has another year to go. Crawford will get another chance this time from the two. Lost the 20 to about the 22, and that is all. So now, for Page and company, will try to get something going. They've not been able to get the ball to Keith Edwards. And to go back to that last series of downs, twice, Page underthrew a man. And the third time, Carl Wilson came in and batted the ball back into the end zone. John Batiste, I'm a, here's what special teams players have to do. Now watch, he fights through one man. Now he's looking at the football. Watch his eyes. He's at the ball. On Crawford's got the ball, but he doesn't make the tackle because his own man knocked him off. Now we're back live from LSU. Page, Carl Woods, and not much there. And you can see that Henry Thomas got in there. And there's your scoring drive, 50 yards. One of their drives tonight has been 88 yards. I know it's not easy for the LSU defense, but when Carl Woods is the man that normally carries the ball, Keith Edwards, the running back, has only carried the ball five times so far this year. He is basically a pass receiver and a blocker. Now he's out on the slot. There he is in the lower center of your screen. 97 catches last year. Only... 17 this year and Woods catch, runs the ball again is out near the 30 
Oh, perhaps Coach George McIntyre said, hey, fellas, let us get ourselves together and get something established here. So they go back to Woods, a leading ball carrier. And he is out across the 30. They've got to get the ball almost to the 33 for the first down. It's third down. 17 down, Jim, with 49 seconds and counting in the first quarter. I know you have to get your team together and get something done, but Vanderbilt has to throw the football. Joe Kelly goes wide to the left. And now Pop comes to the right. Scott flanks to the left. They need a few yards. And they're going to throw for it if they can. And they throw behind the intended receiver, and that is Keith Edwards coming out of the backfield. It is fourth down. And Anderson will come in to kick again. I tell you what. LSU's defense is doing its job. The Vanderbilt defense has been on the field through most of the first quarter. And they're having a problem. They don't really know what to do to stop LSU because you've got James, Hilliard, Fontenot, McGee, Martin, Andrews. They're hitting everyone 10 out of 11 for Wickersham. That's Norman Jefferson. He's standing back on his own 22 with great respect to the man you're looking at there kicking Ricky Anderson. Even from here, he might kick it over his head. He hit it. It's over oh, his it's head. It's over his head. Back up. Back up. He's got it. Down at the 11-yard line. He's trying for the same wall up here again. And pulls it off. And he's going to be stepping out of bounds at the 48-yard line. First down LSU near midfield. LSU has done everything in the correct department tonight. That is... A 58-yard punt. One time, Jefferson returned the ball for only a yard. This time, for 36 yards. And what happens, you know, you hate to use that expression because he's a, such a great kicker, Anderson, but he's out kicking his coverage. And what's what's happening is that they got a chance to set up that wall because the defense can't get down there fast enough. And all he has to do is get by the first man. Once you do that, the wall is set. This is the last play of the first quarter. They hand the ball to Hilliard. He gets across the 50, and the first quarter has ended. And the first quarter, to repeat ourselves, all SU, they lead by 17. It is second down, and six to go LSU on the 48 of Vanderbilt. That is Fontenot in motion. And the fake to Hilliard, they throw it out to Martin, his first catch it right, and Martin may have the first down. And you can see that the official's foot is right there at the first down marker. Armando Fitz put him down. <laughs> now, wait a minute. What are you laughing at? Well, didn't George McIntyre tell us one thing that we have to do? We have to control the football, keep the ball away from LSU. Take a look. 202 yards of 13. Half possession, 10 minutes and 29 seconds. That is not keeping the ball away from LSU. I think most people would say... 202 yards to 13 <laughs> instead of 22 yards to 13. Now that's a big difference there. And Vanderbilt, and we are reminded that Page has had bad, well, only one bad game, and that was against Tulane. Intercepted four times in the rain, and it was raining here now, although it is slacked off. October 25th, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Pacific, BYU thus far unbeaten at New Mexico. We're on ESPN. All about the Albuquerque. Here is Hilliard dancing around and not going very far at all as the play is made there by Jeff Cartwright, 64, and David Worm, 97. The end and strong side linebacker. Jim, there's a deadly pass that LSU is throwing. They've got, they, they put Fontenot or McGee out alongside of Eric Martin. The two guys are together. They're not doing it this time. And what they're doing is throwing the ball to Martin, and Fontenot is right out in front blocking, so they already have a lead blocker on the outside. Now they're taking Fontenot in motion. And now they're going to put him out there, but he's going to throw a pass. And look at Martin all by himself. He makes the catch. First and goal to go at the five. And Fontenot threw the inbounds. It would have been touchdown, but he threw it to the sidelines. Martin did a good job. Isn't it beautiful when you have two people to throw the ball to? Not only did he have Eric Martin downfield, but he also had Gary James down there. All right, we're going to see Martin a little stutter step. See James running alongside him, but watch the catch that Eric Martin. He's looking to his inside, sees the ball, total concentration, Jim. He had to turn his back to the ball and still make the catch. That's beautiful. 36-yard play, first and goal to go for the rolling Tigers. Pitch to Fontenot, 
who threw to Morton, and then they ran the flanker in motion, and he scores from five yards out. Well, George McIntyre knew all about it. There's a flag in the end zone, and I don't know whether if that's that's against the team or not of LSU. It'll be on the kickoff. We know that. Well, who would have thought conduct. this, Paul? Who would have thought this? This was a game that was supposed to be close. Anything but close. Watch Fontenot now. He comes around on the reverse. The whole Vanderbilt defense went right. Fontenot comes left. The only man who really has a shot at him is Manuel Young. They're very fine free safety, number 32. But Fontenot's already in the end zone. They celebrated. It cost them unsportsmanlike conduct. The Danzos will try to add his sixth point of the game. And does 14-04 to go. This is Weatherspoon at the 23. And not going very far at all as Mickey Harris. A freshman running back put him down. All right, watch Fontenot. On, on, see him on the wing. Now, all the players from Vanderbilt are going to their left. Fontenot's going back to their right. Now, you see Manuel Young in there, Jim? He's the only one that read it. Watch Manuel Young. That's why he's such a great free safety. He reads it, gets into the play, but cannot stop Fontenot from the touchdown. On the 33, Kirk Page tries to get something going for Vanderbilt. They're down by 24 points. And he gives the ball to Carl Woods, and Woods gets to about the 37-yard line. Greg Dubrock, number 44, hanging on. You say Kirk Page has only had one really bad game for him? That was Tulane of his five interceptions. Four of those were in that game just last weekend. And that was in wet weather. It rained right. way before the game, and he's not having a very good day so far here. And it's been raining. Now it's kind of slacked off a little. Ardell Fuller is to the right. Chuck Scott is to the right. Second and six. Page brings it up, and Edwards can't hold on to it. Ball's on the ball just in case it's ruled a lateral, but that's a forward pass, and all of a sudden it is third down and six. Jim, that was a slip screen out to Keith Edwards. He had two offensive linemen out in front of him, Herman and Denson. They were both out there. All Edwards had to do was catch the ball, and he had the whole sideline to run. And now here comes the Tiger or Bengal wave about the stadium on third down and six. 79,000, that's how many? Well, a little bit more than 79,000, and naturally there's a sellout. There's Page, look out, the blitz is on! By Dubrock. Page picks himself up at the 25, the original line of scrimmage is a 33. That is a loss back from the 38. Watch Page, he will look to the look at the left of your screen. He's looking left, he does not see Dubrock, number 44 coming from the backside. Never once saw him. His back was to him. He was looking for Fuller, number two, going down the field. This is the only weapon that Vanderbilt's had. And he's been out taking his coverage, and Jefferson last time had a 36-yard return. That's not the same kind of kick. And we'll go near, well, they're going to doubt him about the 35-yard line. One time tonight, LSU has been deep in its own territory. The rest of the time, outstanding field position. That's why he only ended up with a 39-yard kick. But his follow-through, and he's such a strong kicker, he still ends up with 39-yard punt. This is what LSU wants to show the nation, a nighttime event. And it is an event in Tiger Stadium on Saturday night. And I got bad news for the folks in Notre Dame, Indiana. Are they waiting for them down here in a couple of weeks? <laughs> From the 36-yard line, first down, LSU, they have been the dominant team, and Hilliard does not get much. Hilliard is well below his average tonight. Amando Fitz makes the stop. And Vanderbilt's doing one thing defensively. They are accomplishing what they want to do, stopping Dalton Hilliard and Gary James, except for the touchdown run. But... Pass defense, it hasn't been there at all. Well, we knew about the corners, Anderson and Sykes, being youngsters, up, flag down. One of the rare flags of this day, and it may be their old Curtis. 
did some jumping. That's right in. There's where this crowd has hurt LSU because Curtis is the man that moved and Vanderbilt jumped on it right away. And, and you can see the, the, the uh, Fontenot goes back and says, keep it down a little bit because we can't hear any audibles and change in signals. Well, we said earlier, as uh, Robert I.A. tells us, that some people call this Death Valley, meaning you die here, and some people call it Death Valley, meaning you can't hear here. <laughs> Maybe both are true. 24 to nothing, LSU, 11.50 to go in the half. Rats in the man in motion, and that is James with the football, and that is Sykes after him, pushing him out of bounds. Now marks the ball at the 41-yard line. And that's a good pickup of about 10 yards, and it'll be second down. And five, make that third down. George McIntyre has been able to shed his rain gear, but not his problems and concerns about his team. Under 20 yards in total offense so far. Third down, make it. He's and five. Colt is the man at the top of the screen. And look at that. Oh, he gets away and throws it for Holt and then out of bounds when I think he spotted over there with Holt, Don Anderson, the sophomore. And to the ball on the bench to Vanderbilt. And now for the first time, Clay Parker will come in to kick the ball away. All right, take a look on the top side. There's a stun on the outside, and there's Harold blocking number 70. He's blocking the outside on Wyndham. But two people from the outside, the two linebackers came, and the backs were out of the backfield. Nobody blocked anyone. Clay Parker's in there for the very first time tonight. Every time other than this, LSU's had the football, they have scored. Excuse me. <laughs> and the third catch is called for by Manuel Young inside the 25-yard line, 11.27 to go. And you're right, it's 24-0 LSU. The minus yardage, Vanderbilt has six yards only total offense. LSU, 252 yards total offense. And that is somewhat of a disparity. I think so. From the 22-yard line, first down, Vanderbilt. Bill Hansbarger noted the defense. He would have done his team has done tonight. Page in trouble. Puts it to the up man and out of bounds. Goes number 29, Louis Stevenson, making his first appearance of the night and makes his 10th catch of the year. Remember, Hansbarger was telling us about this young man, Michael Brooks. Watch him. Here he comes to the inside. Now he's trying to mark Herman, number 62, is trying to block him. He just takes Herman back into the into the quarterback page. This is what causes the mix-up. It's only about a two and a half yard gain, but Michael Brooks, number 94, the sophomore, was in his face. Second down and seven from the 26. to Everett Crawford making his first appearance in the offensive backfield and Crawford makes the best run of the night for Vanderbilt and picks up the first down across the 35 to the 38. The freshman of Huntsville, Alabama. You're absolutely right about the best run, the best play of the night for Vanderbilt. There's 11, almost inside of 11 minutes in the second quarter. That time they just caved down the whole right side of the defensive line of LSU. Butch Bullen is in wide to the right. Kelly to the left, Stevenson in motion, and that is Crawford carrying the ball as George McIntyre is beginning to put men other than his starters in there. When I say Butch Bullen is in there, that means that the All-American Chuck Scott leading the conference with 27 catches is not in there. Jeffrey Dale comes in, Steve Rehage comes out. That's strong safety for LSU. This is second down and seven to go. Page, let's all oh, look at this. Falling down flat, unable to get the ball at all is Louis Stevenson. The rain has stopped, but the field remains wet. Michael Brooks, 94. Pressure on the quarterback. Herman out to block him. There he comes, and I tell you right now, you know that Kurt Page feels him coming after him. Page now, Paul, 
has completed two passes in eight attempts for nine yards. Here's another one, 0-4 on third down conversion. And this is third and seven. Got to get something going to Commodores to stay in this ball game. And now they throw it to take the ball to Bullen. Bullen is taken down by Kevin Gidley, but that's the first down of the 36. By far the best drive of the night for the Commodores. All right, Page does hit Bullen, and the blitz is on. You can see everybody for LSU coming, and they've got to be man covered down there. Look at this. Over the top, he gets hammered. That's number 60 on Katzen. And look at this. There's Bullen downfield. He's wide open. Gidry was trying to cover him. Couldn't do it. Now Bullen and Kelly both wide to the right. First down from a 36. Everett Crawford carries the ball and gets inside a 35-yard line, and that is all. You can see Tommy Clapp, number 97, getting up, along with Carl Wilson, number 72. You know, you've talked about this Vanderbilt offense, and it is a potent offense. You let this team down 24-0. I know you're at home, but you don't want to ever let them get the feeling they can get started, Vanderbilt, I'm talking about, because they can burn you. They score here. It's a different ballgame. Chuck Scott comes in, the senior All-American, and comes out wide left. Second down and eight from the 34. And now here's Crawford looking for running room. That runs well and gets inside the 30-yard line. Hit down by Toby Gaston, number 69. Crawford's stats, 5'11", 180, a freshman. Averaging better than five yards per carry before tonight. Locked the ball at the 29. It is third down. They've got to get it down to the 26 to get a first down. 8.40 left in the first half. LSU with a blitz of a start. It was 17-0 at the end of the first quarter, 24-0 within the first minute of the second quarter. Kelly left and Scott goes to the right. Third down. Page. Page has his man and's got the first down. And fighting down is Jim Pop, the tight end with Gidry hanging on. Vanderbilt has come back. Big target. Look at the tight end. The inside release, freeze the linebacker, hold Burks there, and then move back to the outside. Not much help out there. And that's Burks, the linebacker, trying to hold on. And there's also piling on afterwards. Balls at the 19-yard line, first down. Good drive by Vanderbilt. They've not lost their poise. Edwards sets flanker to the right. And now comes in motion. First down, straight ahead goes Everett Crawford. Gets the ball for perhaps a yard or two. Now, remember, Page has stayed in there. Pop has remained in there. But they've used Scott, Bullen, Kelly, Fuller as wide receivers, Woods, Crawford, Stevenson, and Edwards as running backs. And it is the second unit, Bullen and Crawford and Stevenson, that have moved the ball downfield for the most part. Kelly comes wide to the left. And out there on him is Gidry. Kelly, can barely averaging nearly 21 yards per catch. Second and nine. Page looking for Kelly and gets it over here, but out of bounds, and Gidley was taking dead aim on the interception. Third down. Makes Kurt Page such a good quarterback because he knew that Kelly was covered by Gidry, number 27. He had no choice but to throw the ball out of bounds. Now we've got a third and ten. The important points for Vanderbilt. Important that they come away with points. Now, Anderson, remember, has got plenty of leg to get three, but they want seven. You bet. Kelly and Scott both left. And Page rolls out left. Leads a lot. Throws it into the end zone and out of the end zone. And the nearest man to it was Joe Kelly. It's fourth down. As Page takes a seat. I think... Is that Sean Burke, 57, that made him take a seat? Here comes Page, now to the outside. He's going to get hit. 97, Clapp is also back there, but I think that's Sean Burke. He's directing traffic right now. Here comes Sean Burke. Wham! Ricky Anderson, 12 for 14 in the field goal department, 3 of 4 against Tulane last week. Or try a 35-yard field goal, and this is the first real attempt. Of course, you're always trying to score, but the first real chance for Vanderbilt to score tonight. 
35 yards out. He drills it through. And Vanderbilt is on the board. LSU leads 24-3. Boston College, 24-10. Fourth quarter over Temple. Doug Flutie must have a night. SMU had to come from behind to beat Baylor, 24-20. That had the makings of an upset. Miami, 21-7 over Cincinnati. Hurricanes in a great situation moving to the top 10. Auburn over Florida State. Surprised some people. Second quarter, 22-17. And Virginia beating Georgia Tech, third quarter, 13-10. Georgia Tech was beaten by North Carolina State last week. Well, here comes Vanderbilt kicking off for the second time tonight. And they kick it toward the sidelines. Fair catch called for across the way. And was taken over there by Brian Kinchin. No, I guess when you're down, you try him out of there. Was that a heads-up play, though, by Kinchin, Jim? Call a fair catch. catch. You bet. How many people really think of it, especially the up on a kickoff to call for a fair catch? Mark the ball at the 36-yard line. 7.02 left. It's 24-3 LSU. Next Saturday night, Paul and I will get a look at Oklahoma the following Thursday. BYU. Oh, my. And jumping offside is... Mitch Andrews, he caught a couple of big passes early on in the drives of LSU, but that time he just went too soon. There's seven minutes and two seconds left to go in the second quarter. LSU up 24 to three. The defense is doing a great job, Jim. I don't want to see them stop doing the things that they did to get the 24. This is what we told you. Oklahoma and Iowa State next Saturday night. Iowa State lost to Colorado, and here comes Oklahoma. That took a deliberate safety when they were leading 15-10. Texas took the two points, got the ball, kicked the field goal, and that ended up 15-all, a tie. Here comes the rain again. First and 15. And coming out to Ratchin. And Ratchin goes down at about the 37-yard line. Got about the five they lost before. Maybe one more. Chris Gaines puts it down, number 34. They're not going to sit on it. I like it. I mean, yeah, I'm not rooting for either one of the teams, but I like it. They got 24 points by moving the ball, throwing it, whatever they had to do. They're not stopping. Vanderbilt off to his disaster start, really righted itself, and must be telling themselves that there's still plenty of time to go, better than 36 minutes left in the ball game, the playing time. But they got to stop LSU. They did the last time, and now here is a running play by Gary James, and it's going to be third down and long. John Wyndham, the junior tight end out of Brentwood, Tennessee, made the good big play. And now LSU, for one of the rare times tonight, finds itself with third down and seven. Nearly third and eight. Now, who do we have in the back for it? We have Hilliard and James. And Martin coming to the right, and Pontano, who threw a pass to get him down to the five and then scored to the left. Go, go. And here's Wickersham. Oh, look at the time. Look at the time, and quite a good play. There's a catch made by Pontano, and it's a first down. Tremendous play by Kermit Sykes, but Pontano held on. Did Sykes hit him a little bit too soon? We're going to take a look at Pontano now. Watch. Remember now, he can't touch him until the ball is there. Pontano, total concentration on the ball. Here comes Sykes. Whoops. He, that's pass interference. He hits him before the ball gets there. But he caught it. That's it. The ball is at the 46-yard line. Big third down and eighth play for LSU. And this is the first down. Ratchy on the man in motion. And here comes Hilliard. He's not had a big run tonight, but here comes one as he picks up the first down. And Garland Hilliard, the junior out of Patterson, finally gets it moving. Which means he finally got some good blocking on the right side. Yes, he does it. And Dalton Hilliard does not waste any time getting to the hole. That's important. Here it comes. The toss to Hilliard. He knows about Ratchin's out in front of him blocking. There's the block by Ratchin. Beautiful block on Johnson, 17. And look at Hilliard. The hole is there. They're inside the 35. 5.15 to go and counting in the first half. Ratchin again, the man in motion. Pitch to Gary James. Oh, look at this play. He lost the football. Vanderbilt says they have it. Let's let the officials tell us who's got it. And it LSU. looks like Gary James has got it. But a loss on the play. Rathjen did not block his man. Was that Tim Johnson, a strong safety? He came up and made the play. Rathjen did not block the outside man. And that time, James ran right into Rathjen. Thought the block was going to be there. There's the rain coming again. Ball is back at the 41-yard line. Make it second and 17 in this 24-3 ball game. It never rains here on a game night. That's what they tell me. 
I guess they'll have to change that to it usually never rains here on the game. Line. And here is Wickersham. Flag is down, could be holding, and he overshoots Martin, and they can't make the interception. Flag down, Martin couldn't get the ball. Don Anderson knows the defender. Now, it could be third and 17, or it could be second and 20, if it is holding. Be interesting to see what and it's going to be what Vanderbilt says. Do we want the big yardage? No, I'd, I'd refuse the penalty. I'd take it third and 17, but let's see what they do. You talk about the replay, and I'll talk about what they do. Look at the top of your screen, 63. See Gore, Kurt Gore? There's where they call the holding right there. That's not a dance. That's, that's holding. And now Robert I.A. will tell us it was holding against LSU, and they have refused it. It's third down, 17. Heads up, football. Bill Arnsbarger, at last a head coach in the college ranks. He's been a head coach in the pros. That's a trivia question for you. Memories of the New York Giants. But everybody remembers him with the Miami Dolphins' longtime friend and advisor on defense to Don Schuler, Miami. Third and 17, Wickersham rolling right. Wickersham, and that's going to be intercepted by Jeff Kurt right the linebacker. And Vanderbilt's got the ball on their own 38. First interception of the night, the fifth of the year against Wickersham. And for Cartwright, his first. First mistake by Wickersham. He has all day to throw the football. He's got people. There's Dalton Hilliard coming out. He gets knocked off at the line of scrimmage. Now watch Dalton Hilliard. He's going across. He's still covered, but he throws the ball behind him. Cartwright is going to be right there to pick up the ball make the interception and Vanderbilt has the ball back and if they should score here it's a totally different ball game for the second half but they've got to mount something here they only have three points as a throw across the way that is taken by Ardell Fuller and he has run out of bounds across the way by Tommy Clapp the freshman out of Gretna not much of a gain on the play move the ball out to the 39 yard line and if anything well it's just called it second down and 10. Not a great play by Clapp. That's a defensive end. They ran that quick screen to the outside to Fuller, the wide receiver. And here's Clapp, a defensive end, knows he can't get to the passes, so he's going to go out and cover the receiver. Butch Bullen is in. He's made a big catch tonight. And now trying to get outside is Woods. He breaks the tackles. And finally, that is Gidry that puts him down along with Dale. Woods, well, let's put it this way. Woods has, before tonight, 116 carries, and Crawford was second with 28, so you'd almost say depend on Carl Woods, the sophomore of Gallatin, Texas. Hold it, Gallatin, Tennessee. Martin, the volunteer state. Third down, and five. Nickel defense. And Scott, not had a big night tonight. Wide to the right. Page over here, and that well, I don't know what's going to be the first down and offer Joe Kelly. Beaver Hodge was on him, and this will be close. And with 3:38 to go, it may be decision time if it is not a first down. And also, a flag is down, so it may all be academic. It could be holding. Come on, Yell, take it down. John Burke steps in. We got a Baton Rouge to get the explanation. And already Vanderbilt is walking backwards. Well, you take this one because it'll be fourth down in about inch, I would say inches, maybe a half a yard at the most. And Vanderbilt being down 24 to 3 may go for this thing. I, I, I would say take the penalty. Well, they've done neither yet. Well, the biggest problem Kurt Page is having is a young man number 94 by the name of Michael Brooks. Now they're going to measure to see whether or not it is that far that they should take the penalty or let the play stand. That's what, that's what I'm saying. It's going to be that short, and you don't want to give them that ball there with, with fourth down because they can run the football. Don't listen to the fans, Coach. I know you won't. Well, they'll bring the sticks across the way. 3.38 left in this first half of the ball game, and a shocking start as far as Vanderbilt is concerned. 
How much have they got? About a half, half a yard, half the ball? Can't see. But it's not much. Or is a shocking start at one time, remember, total yardage 252 for Second. LSU and six for Vanderbilt. Now they're going to take the penalty. Here's the man we're talking about. We will be most of the night. Michael Brooks. Watch this. He's on the outside. They're coming out. That's Woods trying to block him. Watch this. He gets away from Woods. And it's still Page could see him on the outside. But look at his reaction. After the ball is thrown, he is now going to the ball. I, I like this call. You take the penalty. That moves the ball back inside the 30-yard line. And it is third down on 23 to go. 338 left. Michael Brooks for 230 pounds, a sophomore out of Ruston, has four or five speed. <laughs> and Bill Arnsbarger, who should know a linebacker when he sees one, says he is going to be a great one. Third down, 23. That's Scott in motion. Page looking and delivering for Scott, who cannot hold on to it. What about a first down? At midfield, it's fourth down, and Ricky Anderson will have to kick the ball away. Chuck Scott, what a great job he did as a flanker getting downfield, Jim. He got knocked off first by Jeffrey Dale, number four. And he, Scott, you don't pick him up right now, but he was hit twice. Then all of a sudden, Page sees him. He gets behind the defense. DeBrock, number 44, is a linebacker, remember? It was open, just dropped the football. Now, here comes the man that can kick a football. Ricky Anderson. And Norman Jefferson, he's had one long return tonight. Jefferson standing on his own 26. There's another one. Jefferson all the way back to the 20. Down he goes as he crosses the 30-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 from there. 310 left in the half. Cannot give Eric Martin that much room. And again, I like the play calling because they're not settling with 24 points. LSU wants to go in there with, with about seven more. Roger McGee wide to the left. Made a big catch tonight, remember, for a touchdown. And now over here to Martin again. They figure, well, they, they're giving it to us. Why not take it again? Eric Martin to the 45 and very close to yet another first down. And Vincent Anderson to the people he's picking on. Well, Anderson, Don Anderson, number 28, is playing off of Martin about 12 to 15 yards and backing up as Martin comes off the line of scrimmage. But the ball at the 45, if they get it across the 45, they've got a first down. Armin Fontenot having a great night is wide left. Into the pass. And now Fontenot is down there and can't get to it. Would have been out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Wickersham, Jennifer Fontenot, incomplete. Want to know why Wickersham control? Watch this. Look at Harold number 70. Sitting over there just blocking. That's that's the linebacker stunning back around the outside. And oops. <laughs> In your face. Third down and short yardage to go. Talked a great deal about the running game tonight. And of course, Gary James has been effective with one long run. Hilliard has had one of better than 10 yards, but here's Hilliard again, and he's got the first down and a lot more. But by and large, it has been the show of Jeff Wickersham and his wide receivers tonight. Inside the 35, another first down. They'll move the sticks. 242 to go in the half. First of all, Hilliard hits the hole as fast as any back we've seen all year long. Manuel Young is the free safety, and his job is to read. He first reads oh. one, he gets official in the way. Now watch what Emmanuel Young, what Emmanuel Young tries to do. He knows they've got him tied up, and then Hilliard's going to try to hand the ball off to Fontenot. Look at this. That is overthrown and intercepted. And run out of bounds is Manuel Young with his second interception of the year. Ball was overthrown, and Young, the good senior from Columbia, Tennessee, made the catch. They and went, Vanderbilt stops. Excuse me, Jim, but they went to Eric Martin on two short drops. Got him in that 12-yard pattern. Manuel Young, McIntyre said he's the best player he's ever coached. First quarter is all LSU, but Hanzo's hit on the 31-yard field goal before the... Bengals really got it cranked up after a good long run. James took it in to make it 10 to nothing on a one yarder. McGee made the good pass play, although defended to make it 17, then fought it off to make it 24. And then Vanderbilt got 
It's three points. And now Woods is trying to run him out and has run out of bounds himself as he hits to the eight yard line. And it is second down. And seven to go. Stopping the clock at 2.15. Well, do you think we thought we'd see a lot of scoring, but we thought we'd see a lot of scoring on both sides. But the LSU defense has done what Arnsbarger defenses have done most of the time. He's been in charge. They've just almost shut him down completely. Well, that's what we talked about. He was the defensive coordinator of the Miami Dolphins. He knows defense, and he scouted this team very well. Second down seven. And that is Woods trying to get outside. And he does, and he may have the first down, and he's got it across the 15 yard line. Carl Woods picks up the first down. Woods gets outside. Jeffrey Dale, number 44, the, or number four, the strong safety. You're going to see the left of your screen. He gets himself caught inside. Right there, he's being blocked on the corner. Woods back to the outside, picks up the first down. Kevin Gidry finally made the tackle. Less than two minutes to go in this 24-3 first half. is close to the first down across the 25 to the 26. Jeffrey Dale ran him out of bounds. Dubrock was a linebacker on that side, and when Keith Edwards came out swinging, there, there was not one linebacker or a safety man there to, to stop him, and they just, Page just dumped the ball off to Edwards, and they picked up nine yards. Remember at halftime, we'll get a lot of scores, some of them surprising, some of them not so surprising from around the country today and tonight. And then we've got the second half as the Commodores will try to get back into this ball game in the second half. They certainly didn't have a chance at the outset. Second down short. And there goes Woods, and he's got the first down. Tackle was made there. Trying to see who the man is that gets up. I can see Edward Hobley in on the play. And Dubrock. All right, now Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt will throw the football. They've got three timeouts left. It's a minute 35 in counting, and now you go up, go up top. And don't try to get it all. Just get downfield and try to get another, at least another three out of this. But Gordon is in wide to the left. They have four wide receivers in there. Page has got time and coming back, but he throws it on one hop. That's to Bullen there, and defending was James Pearson, a freshman, out of New Orleans. All right, watch Page now. He'll come back to the outside. 99 Hall, who is the defensive end, he's getting blocked. But watch Hall, never quits, never quits, and Page is there. He sees that Hall's coming up. You see 99 in your screen right there. He's in his face. Page threw the ball in the dirt. Remember, Vanderbilt this year, among others, has beaten Maryland and Alabama. But they have their hands full tonight. Second down and 10. Here's Page again. As time, oh, that's a good catch right there. Outstanding catch by the tight end, Jim Pop. Not enough for the first down. Clock continues to run down near the one-minute mark. Well, take a timeout. I mean, here goes some pages back, and, and they they're giving the time to throw. Yeah, he takes a timeout now after eight more seconds off the clock. All right, that's popped the tight end. He catches the ball, didn't get enough for the first down. But you've got to take timeout. You have three timeouts. Now they're down to a minute and two. Again, our reminder about the scores at halftime here. From around the country on Sports Center. Ball is at the 44-yard line of Vanderbilt. The score is 24 to 3. They went deep into the second quarter before they finally got their first points on a 35-yard field goal by Ricky Anderson. It is third down and about a yard to go. Next weekend, Oklahoma goes to Iowa State. Porter will be there. And the following Thursday will be in Albuquerque, New Mexico for BYU. Take a look at this. Kirk Page, total offense last year this is. In receiving, Keith Edwards only caught one tonight. Was the number one in receiving. And Chuck Scott playing tight end, even though he's a flanker, he's calling him. He's got 70 receptions to lead all tight ends. <laughs> you don't think they haven't got some offense? That's why at LSU, they're not sitting on the ball. They keep trying to score, even though they're up 24 to 3. They know that this team can explode and come back and get you. 
Joe Kelly wide right. Chuck Scott to the left. Third down and straight ahead goes Woods and he's got the first down and that'll stop the clock while they move the sticks. That's a good call even if people say well, what are that, why are they doing that? In college football we must remind you that every time they get a first down the clock stops till the ball is set and the chains are moved. Kurt Page will have his play called. However, I must tell you that about four seconds ran off the clock before they stopped the clock. Now maybe that's what officials do until they make sure it's the first down. They have not moved the sticks yet. There's George McIntyre cheerleading from the sidelines, but can't like what he's seen so far. Now they've moved the sticks. But the clock had started, of course, once they had moved the sticks. And there's a the catch across the way. And that is by Joe Kelly. James Pearson put him down. And that's close to another first down. And is another first down. Interesting. Now, I'm looking at this. We do have the nickel back in for LSU. Pearson is in there, number 25, James Pearson. So they are playing the nickel, but they've got to get more heat on the quarterback. You cannot let Kurt Page stand back there and throw the football. And they're doing the smart thing, Jim. They're just moving the ball down the field eight to ten yards each time. Three would be good. And Anderson could kick it. But seven would be much better. First down, ball up to 42. There's Page, and there's a little shovel in there, and did not fool the man right there. And that was Henry Thomas, a nose guard, who just put Carl Woods down as soon as he got it. Timeout Watch now by Vandy. Watch 96 here. You're absolutely right. Henry Thomas, if he does not make the play, Woods is still running. Watch Henry Thomas right there. Perfect position for the play. Hits, the, hits Woods on top, and it slides down to his feet. No chance to run the ball. 34 seconds to go. And time has been called again by Vanderbilt. Next Saturday at noon Eastern time, South Carolina, which is undefeated this year, plays Notre Dame. And the Irish have lost their last two at home. To Miami last week, the Air Force Academy for the third time in three years today. And the Fighting Irish are going to have it tough next week. But ESPN will be there. It may not be seen in some areas, but ESPN will be there to bring you uh, the success story. They hope to continue to South Carolina and the struggles in Notre Dame. Second down. And 15 to go from the 47. Fuller wide to the right. And Page, not much time left. Goes, has got it. By Sean Burks. Burks, if he doesn't get killed by his teammates, <laughs> or go to the sidelines as a hero. This, that's the first interception against Page. This ball was thrown underneath and, and low. Had he, had he thrown it higher, he had Chuck Scott wide open coming across. He had already cleared the linebackers. Watch Chuck Scott. He's going to have to fight his way through right here. Now he's behind everyone. John Burks is up in front about six yards where he intercepts the football. If the ball had been thrown higher on the top, watch it. There's Sean Burks there. That pass would have been completed. And yeah. It was to Sean Burks. LSU from their own 36 and with little time left, they're going up again. And there's quite a hit put on Raji McGee after he caught the ball. Time has been called by LSU with 16 seconds to go. They want more. You bet they do. They know. Again, I, I'm not trying to repeat myself but they know Vanderbilt they're moving the ball Vanderbilt Vanderbilt starting to get their feet underneath them but it's a little bit late 24 to 3 and LSU knows that they have the feeling anyway the 24 points may not hold up in this ball game so they've got 16 seconds left to go two timeouts they're taking it the battle of Jeff Wickersham and Kurt Page thus far has been one going away by Wickersham they just suffered a couple of interceptions. Page has just suffered his first. Always a sellout here at 76,869. You can just mark that down anytime LSU tees up the football to kick off here at Bengals Stadium. Len Holt, who has been in there on about a half a dozen plays tonight, the freshman out of Miami, is back in. And Vanderbilt is going to have to come out of the second half now. Vanderbilt will get the ball to start the second half, and that's when they got to try to establish something and make something happen. In the meantime, in the final 16 seconds, they got to hold LSU. Bengals, as Paul has said, they're not content to sit on this. Here goes Wickersham. Got time. Old as he had time. 
throws a football, and right there, going out of bounds is Herman Pomelo with the catch. Now they're in field goal range, if nothing else, at the 15-yard line with seven seconds to go. And two timeouts. They've got two plays they can run here. If he, if he passes quick, are they going to go? They're going to go field, they're goal, field now. goal right now. Well, Lance Smith, number 75, you want to know why Wickersham has a lot of time? Watch this. He's blocking on Wyndham. Gets him to the inside, stays with him. And then there's Fontenot just sitting down there waiting for the ball to get to him. Sykes is coming over. It's too late. They've got the ball at the 15. And field goal down. 41-yard play, and Matanzos, who has hit a 31-yard field goal, will try one of 32 yards. Gets it up, and from 32 yards out, it is good. run out and LSU runs off the field with an outstanding first half at the end of the half LSU on an awesome offensive display and great defense Everett Crawford number one Kenny Weatherspoon number 33 there that is Weatherspoon at the 8 the 15 and across the 20 and Vanderbilt will come out Kurt Page will bring his men back out all right, look at these stats. Now, I want you to look at the total yards of Bandy, 135. Remember one thing when you look at all these stats. With about 11 minutes to go in the second quarter, Bandy had six yards total offense. Now, at the half, 135. The big numbers, 363. And the big score, 27 to 3. And now we hear an official say, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And I don't know why that is said. They're talking to Sean Brooks along the sideline. And Brooks takes himself out of the ball game, and they call time. The LSU took time out. Vanderbilt, well, look at the first four times. Punt, 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 punt. Finally got a field goal, then had to punt, and then they're moving the ball down only to have it intercepted. They came away with just three points. Now let's take a look at the other 363 yards. Look at this. The first four times that LSU had the ball, a field goal, three touchdowns in a row, the only punt for them one time in the first half, were intercepted twice and then ended it with a field goal to give them the 27 points. I don't know what happened to Sean Burks, but he took himself out of the game, Paul, and Darren Marlboro, a freshman number 90, has taken over the inside linebacker spot, at least for the moment. And that's why time was called. Well, Sean Burks is on the sidelines. He's standing there. He has his helmet off. But he looks like he's all right. Again, you're absolutely right. He did take himself out of the game. And they forced LSU to take a timeout. Now Robert I.A. blows the whistle. Time is in. Vanderbilt's got the ball. First and 10 on their own 25. They're down by 24 points as we begin the second half. Chuck Scott, the All-American, 46 wide to the right. Jim Pop, the tight end, is on the right side. Quick little pitch out here and complete. Like Louis Stevenson came out of the backfield. That's who it is, a senior out of Irving, Texas, and makes the catch out to the 29-yard line. A pickup of five, second down and five. Fuller is now in at one of the split ends, number two. He's coming out here to the near side. Scott, he's only got one man on him. That's the freshman, Kevin Gibney, freshman on an All-American far to the right. Stevenson in motion to the right. Ball is handed off. And going nowhere at all is Carl Woods. Marlboro, as a replacement for Sean Burks, makes the stop. Well, Michael Brooks comes from the backside to make the tackle, number 94. Watch this. He knows he can go now. He sees the fake in the backfield. He is right there, runs over the quarterback, Page. Watch what else he does. He's in there helping on the tackle on Woods. Third down and five to go. Not again wide to the right, and again, Gentry's the only man out there with him. is Joe Kelly, and that's a first down and more. If Kelly doesn't peel back too far, they'll mark it at the 40-yard line. Jeffrey Dale and Kevin Gidry made the stop at the 40. And here comes Vanderbilt down by 24. A mistake that time by Michael Brooks. Now there's Brooks on the sideline. Looks like he may have just had his bell well rung a little bit. Squinting. But that time, Michael Brooks left the inside and went out to help on the outside and Kelly just came inside and caught the ball. There was no one there to stop it. About this time comes to the left. And that is 
Woods, and holding on to him is Ricky Chapman, number 37, a senior out of Winfield. A pickup of a couple of yards out to the 42-yard line. Jim, isn't it a little surprising to you when you see Kevin Guidry, who is a freshman, standing out, out on Chuck Scott, number 46, but, but, now, Sykes keeps cheating over to help him out if need be. <laughs> so does, well, Dale, Jeffrey Dale, number four, kind of sneaks over there. Jeffrey Dale, yeah. Dale, right. Every now and again, he's sneaking now. They're not going to leave him all out there, Bob Jones. <laughs> no, they're not. Now, Page has to make up his mind whether to get rid of it or just run it, and he runs out of bounds, being pursued by Michael Brooks. Lost on the play, and it's third and long. Well, 22 left, third quarter, surprising ball game. Big crowd, 78,003. That's a little bit below capacity, although the seats are all sold. And we started out in rather a hard rainstorm, something unusual for a home game. It has slackened off. It really has not rained since early in the second quarter. Third and 11, Vanderbilt on this possession wanted to keep the football. LSU has moved it nearly every time they've had it. Oh, again, open. Oh, and he cannot hold on to the ball. That is Ardell Fuller, and he can't hold on to it. Big hit there by Lifford Hobley and Kevin Guidry. That is fourth down. Now, uh, watch, watch coming out now. The bottom of your screen, and you can see Fuller coming across. Look at Guidry, number 27, is right with him. This ball is right on target. Fuller doesn't, doesn't hold on to the ball because Guidry hit him just as the ball got there. Now Ricky Anderson to kick the ball away. And the beat man is Jeffrey Dale, not Norman Jefferson. That ball's going to go out of bounds, and that is not a great kick for Anderson. Goes out at the 24-yard line. It is first and 10 LSU when we come back. Ball at the 24-yard line. James and Hilliard the setback. And that is Hilliard carrying the football. James, the block for him. He gets across the 30 to the 31. A pickup of seven yards on the play. It is second down and three for Hilliard, who had better than 60 yards in the first half. Marvin Thomas made the stop. Question is now, what adjustments did Vanderbilt make? Are they making adjustments in the second half to stop the pass receivers? If that happens, we may see Hilliard and James running wild. Second down. And here's James. James has run out of bounds at the 39-yard line. That is a first down. Kermit Sykes took him out of bounds. And LSU is doing just what they did in the first half. They've been able to move the football. They picked up a first down and two quick running plays, one by Hilliard, the other by James. First down at the 39. Said, the way LSU is playing, they could move into the top 10. The way Vanderbilt has been stymied thus far, they could drop out of the top 20. And here's Hilliard. Watkins in front of him. Hilliard, quick move. Hilliard's got another first down. Breaking into Vanderbilt territory before Manuel Young puts him down. Hilliard got an excellent block by number 40, Fontenot, Herman Fontenot on the outside. Now, I don't know whether you're going to see it, but look upfield just a little way. There it is, right there on the top. He got a great block. There's John Harrell out in front of him. Hilliard just ran right in front of Harrell, didn't wait for his blocker. Well, he didn't have time. All at the 48. <laughs> now James tries, and James gets a yard or two, and that is about all. Jeff Cartwright, 64 down the bottom. A little help from Steve Wade, 90 up top. It'll be second down and long. Next week, uh, go ahead. No, I was going to say surprising. The first play from scrimmage in the first half, LSU got the ball. It was raining. Then they threw. Now they get the ball the first time in the second half. On this drive, they have not thrown the ball yet. What a big difference. It was 0-0 zero, zero when they got in the first <laughs> half. It's 27-3 in the second half. You bet. Here's Wickersham. Oh, look at this. Down there is Martin. Can he catch it? Yo! the four. Eric Martin with Don Anderson right with it. Half a step too long to throw. Eric Martin with Don Anderson trailing. <laughs> Not with him. 
Take a look at Wickersham. He gets this ball up in the air, and Eric Martin does have a legitimate chance, and he's trying to outrun the football right off his fingertips. On a dry day, that ball would have been caught. Third down, and eight to go. And the Bills trying to get the ball back. Glenn Holt checks in, number 87, the freshman out of Miami. And a flag goes down. That's going to be holding, but Wickersham is going to go down, and I'm sure if that's the case, they will take the play and have LSU kick the ball away. Well, that time Wickersham was looking for Holt, and he was supposed to be running a quick post pattern towards the middle of the field, and Holt did not look at Wickersham, so he had to eat the football. Andy Baker, a freshman, filling in on a strong cornerback side for, uh, side for Kermit Sykes. Number 43 made the stop. And Robert I.A. is talking to Manuel Young, and you know he's going to refuse that and have them kick the ball away. Parker will come on to kick it and Vanderbilt will get another try here and at least the second half for LSU does not start off as successfully and for Vanderbilt more successfully than did the first half. Daniel Young trots back. He is the safety man as Parker barefooted and I'm sure he is thankful that the ball is a little less wet now and his foot a little less wet. Up he did drop it and he's not going to get it away but he gets away and he's going to be caught and it's going to be Vanderbilt's ball in the territory of LSU. Sykes ran him down and a flag goes down after the play. And this could be a big flag here. Apparently dead ball foul either way against Vanderbilt or against LSU and they're pointing at LSU. That's 15 more. That would move it down to about the 35 and put the Commodores right back in business. Jim, play Parker the punter. The only thing they, they ask him to do is to catch the football. Now, again, coming off that and kick it, catch it and kick it, but coming off that turf, the ball might have been wet, slipped out of his hand, and he was worried about picking the ball up. Isn't that ironic? I was talking about a slippery foot and his hands are protected. Watch this. The ball just pops out of his hand. It didn't slip out. Now watch it. And Parker, he does a smart thing. Almost gets away. No traction in the bare foot. Here comes Sykes, number four. Stops him. And then there's a personal foul. Tacked on 15 more. First down from the 35. Vanderbilt. They trail 27, 3, 9, 39 to go. Third quarter. And here comes Wood. Woods inside the 30, down near the 25-yard line. Check that. He'll be out at the 31-yard line. Gidry, a freshman. Gidry has been very much in evidence tonight, Paul. We've, we've had a, a lot of words about their freshman or sophomore corners, but Gidry has played very well. I'm going to tell you, Gidry wishes he wasn't in on this play. Watch 27 on 27. Woods 27, Gidry 27. Watch Woods going to take him on right oh, there. Oh Goodbye. My. That's why he wishes he wasn't in on that play. All the second, other ones are okay. Second down and six from a 31. Away, Woods gets away from two and back to the line of scrimmage. Two tackles he broke in the backfield. It's third down. Michael Brooks is the man. And Pearson finally put him down. Now Brooks. here's a big break ball. First down at the 35. And now all of a sudden it is a third down at the 31. I don't know if Vanderbilt at this point would take a, a shot at a field goal. But we were told by Coach McIntyre that if they had to in the game, then he would not hesitate to have Ricky Anderson kick a 70-yard field goal. He said he can make it. Whatever it is, Joe Kelly, number six, a senior out of Orange, California, has brought in the play from the bench. Third and six. Flag is down. And hold it, did they take too much time? Too much time. Remember, Kelly came in. He had to whisper the play to Kurt Page. And then Page came to the line of scrimmage, and at that time, the flag went down. And so I believe instead of third and six, it's going to be third and 11. <laughs> you know what I like? I watched Tommy clap number 97 that time. He's chasing Page all over the place. Either he can't hear the whistle, or as long as Page is running, I'm told to go after the ball, and that's exactly what he did. They'll mark off the five yards. That is Tommy Clapp, a freshman of Gretna. Coachable. And, and it is for delay again. 
<laughs> Third and 11 from the 36. Long night for George McIntyre and his team that came in here four and one. Need a big play here. They don't want to drop their second in a row. And more importantly, one in the conference. Page puts it up and he's got a man. Scott, he's got the first down and more. Scott down first and goal to go. Pearson puts him down with Hobley at the seven. And Vanderbilt's got the best spot of the night for themselves. First and goal at the seven. Jim, this is what they call the old throw and duck. Watch Page. You think he's a little gun shy? Bang, and get out of the way because he knows he's going to get hit. Here comes Scott. Chuck Scott, number 46, over the defender. That ball was thrown right on target. Number four, Jeffrey Dale, back down there to help out. He didn't have a chance and tackled by Pearson. 27 to 3, Vanderbilt looking for its first touchdown of the night. And they've got four shots. Uh, well, that's not going to get anything, is it? Uh, Woods just barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Take your pick of who was up there. Dubrock, a linebacker. Brooks, a linebacker. And then your down lineman, including 97 Tommy Cloud. Jim, did you say it? I, didn't, I couldn't hear you with the crowd and everything. Chuck Scott's first reception of the night. That's right. Yeah. But I think Kurt Page is, is getting a little gun shy because they're nailing him every time he throws the ball. That's how he's just threw it. That's the old throw and duck and get out of the way. Now Fuller goes wide to the right. They've got three men flanked or split right. So he'll roll that way. Look that way. Put it up for a man and it is incomplete in the end zone. Chuck Scott, the intended receiver. It is third down from the seventh. Well, he's rolling, but he's running for his life, and that being Kurt Page, number 12. Take a look at it here, and he does have Scott open. Watch. Just over the outstretched arm. No chance. And, oh, he's saying, oh, if I just, just didn't lead him that much. That's a tough throw. You're running to your right, you're throwing to your right, and you have a tendency to lead the man out. When you look down there at that offensive line, the defensive line, look at the mud and things. Now you're playing on the right surface, regular surface. Well, this is a big play at third down and goal to go from the seven. So they're going to take time out. 7.46 to go. Again, Mark Herman, number 62, that Michael Brooks takes back. Michael Brooks is blitzing all the way. Look at on the top side. He's going to take. No, it wasn't. It was number Walford. 69, Walford came out to block Michael Brooks, and Michael Brooks just took him right back into the quarterback. Now, uh, Anderson will try a 32-yard field goal, but what a golden opportunity. They had a first at the seven yard line. Anderson kicks and it is good. And now it is 27 to six, but that was a golden opportunity for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, they had a onside kick last week. They're anticipating one now, but instead they kick it away, Mark. And it goes down to the five-yard line, and it is brought back there on a fine run by Hilliard. Does that backfire? He is still going, and there's the lane. Oh, inside the 20-yard line to the 16. Golden Hilliard, what a backfire on the Commodore. Looking and showing onside, they kick long, and Hilliard returns it 80 yards. It's a smart kick because you don't have people to block for him. He doesn't need to watch the men and miss him. Let's count. There's one. There's two. Three. Dalton, he's pointing direction. Four. Go ahead, Dalton. Get your feet up. Five. And Sykes finally gets it. Oh, Dalton Hilliard. All the fortunes have changed. First out of the 15. Hilliard not used on kick returns, but back to the safety valve. Here's Gary James with speed. Trying to get it outside and does for that five. One out of bounds, 6.30 to go, third quarter. LSU looking for its first score of the second half. And with an excellent opportunity. And remember, LSU has to be counted, along with Auburn and Florida and a few others as a real contender for the Southeastern Conference title. 
Vanderbilt would like to think they are too. They've only lost one in the conference. That's before tonight. Here you're back in the game, Jim. Here takes it. I said that Vanderbilt had lost one in the conference. That's not right. They've lost one, none in the conference before tonight. Wyndham makes the stop there. The LSU crowd in this Death Valley or Death Valley comes to life again. Jim, I like the wave. I really do, and I'm not knocking the wave, but when the offense has the ball, don't do it because when you're, especially in this closed end of the ball, it's all closed in here, but the quarterback cannot audibleize now because no one can hear him. And when the other team has the ball, that's when to do it. Here's James. And down looking for the first down and may have it at the five. Jim, we look at Vanderbilt. Kermit Sykes, number four, is doing a great job. It, it, it's always Sykes doing something. He stopped telling you, and here comes Sykes again. He's got to take on the blocker right there. Now he's got to come out on James. Doesn't make the tackle, but he's forcing it to the outside. It is fourth down, and inches to go, and LSU will go for it. James are setbacks. This is Hilliard. And Hilliard, don't know, don't know. Could be Vanderbilt's ball. Flag down. This may be a face mask on Hilliard. I mean, tackling Hilliard because the flag was thrown. Well, Pay or the Wickersham is over there talking. And Vanderbilt is walking back. And the offense of LSU has not left the field, but they're giving the option apparently to Vanderbilt. Or are they just telling him what happened? Oh, it is against Vanderbilt. That's going to be first down. All right. Dalton Hill, you're going to the outside. He's got James in front. Or not, excuse me, that's not James. That's Rathen, Rathen out front blocking. But take a look at that. The man coming from the side, is that young? I can't, I'm, I'm losing numbers because everybody's getting dirty down there, but I think it was uh, Manuel Young, number 32, that came in and made the play. Good play, but the hit was when Hilliard was on the ground. Now, wait a minute, this. hold it, hold it. What's happening here? Vanderbilt is bringing its offense on the team, on the field. After the play, he did not make the first down, so the penalty will be against Vanderbilt. The offense has half, the ball. Half the distance to the goal line. Okay, now we've got it straightened out. They didn't make it. Then the penalty. Ball belongs to Vanderbilt, but half the distance in goal line. 536 left, 27 to 6 with third quarter. LSU has been in command all the way. But Vanderbilt after that 80-yard return of Dalton Hilliard averts a further score. And LSU still has not scored in the second half. But the bigger thing is Vanderbilt has managed but three points in the second half. you think the pressure won't be on page here? Come on out and throw the ball. Nope. And they get on a running play for not much. Michael Brooks takes the tackle of Carl Woods. Kurt Pace. He had finally had to tape his socks off because they've been knocking his socks off all night <laughs> long. He's got them taped up now. Look the mud hanging down. Look, I love this. Now you're playing in the mud. This is where the game was designed to be played. Oh, come on. It was not. It was too. Well, it's never rained down here, though. Second down. Nice. Hage is going to throw from the end zone. Has a man out there and throws a pass Joe Kelly at the 15-yard line. And it is third down. At this point, Vanderbilt wants the first down, but at this point, are they glad they got a guy on the roster by the name of Ricky Anderson who with his foot can get them out of a hole? In the first half, five punts, 51.2 yard average. Now, remember one thing now, close to this goal line, if they go back and throw the football, if there's a holding penalty in the end zone, it's a safety. Third and 13. From the end zone, Page in trouble, gets back to the line of scrimmage, it's fourth down, and Anderson will come on. 
Michael Brooks forcing the action again. You cannot say enough about young Michael Brooks. He's a sophomore, 6'3", 230. Watch it. Now, he's on pop. He just threw a pop, pop, and threw him away. And then Michael Brooks comes back, also beats the offensive lineman, Walford, and makes the tackle. Fourth time that Page has been knocked down for a sack tonight. Anderson needed one and gets one. Back goes Jeffrey Dale. He's at the 47. And gets down about the 43 and run out of bounds at still the 43. 403 to go, third quarter. LSU 27, Vanderbilt 6. But now LSU has a first day the highest scoring team itself, averaging nearly 30 points of all game. Fontenot goes wide to the left. He ran for a touchdown on a flanker reverse back in the first half after drawing a pass to the five-yard line. Here's Gary James and waiting right there for him. Make the tackle. Looks like Mark Wheeler. All right, watch. We're watching Mitch Andrews now. He's a tight end. First of all, he got confused. He was supposed to block Tim Johnson, number 17, is a strong safety. He didn't block him, then, then didn't block anybody and got turned around in the pile. Second down and 10. And his effective ball here. Look out. Rickersham gets the ball away. It's headed for Hilliard behind him. And it's third and 10. And the LSU offense, so effective, in the first half has had one big play in the second half and that wasn't on offense that was a kick return of 80 yards free safety manuel young number 32 watch this he's got dalton hilliard he sees the ball come puts his face in there that's a clean play pops him knows the ball is gone let's go third and ten fontano wide left mcgee slotted inside him martin to the right wickersham back to 12 with all the time in the world and there's rapton Goes to Rapton, and Rapton does not have the first down. Jeff Cartwright, number 64, led the men piling him up there, along with Armando Fitz, the Falcon linebacker. And now LSU has a problem. It is fourth and about three. Do they go for it? No, they don't. They do not. No, no, no. That's not a problem. <laughs> On comes Clay Parker. Last time, remember, he bobbled. The ball from center almost got the first down on the run. Vanderbilt had a first down at the seven, had to settle for a field goal by Anderson of 32 yards. Two forty to go in the third quarter. Daniel Young played an outstanding game tonight, and he's not deep as the safety at all. They're going to run it. They're going to run it, and they got it. What a flag is down. Flag is thrown way down inside the 15, so hold on. They're jumping up and down. The man who carries it is Mike DeWitt, a sophomore to Laurel, Mississippi. A quarterback, but the up man on the play. Let's see what the flag is. I think maybe Vanderbilt had 12 men on the field. I don't know. 12 men on the field. And they still couldn't stop him. Well, Bill Arnsbarger was saying if he does have a trick play, he will run from punt formation with Mike DeWitt. He did, and that's it. All right, there's the punter. He's just faking like he's getting the ball, and he's going up. He can't do anything in hell. Watch number 18, DeWitt. You see him right there? He just follows his blockers up into the hole. All he has to do is get enough for the first down, which is two yards. First of foul. First of legal participation, they call it. Takes it down to the 15. Boston College final over Temple 24-10. And here's Hilton. He gave it every step that he knew and still couldn't get outside. Put down by Tim Johnson. Inside the 15, Miami at the half, leading Cincinnati by 21. All night games. Auburn now trailing Florida State. 35-29 at Tallahassee. Florida State's been waiting for this one. Virginia and Georgia Tech a final 20 all. Second down. Pass play. It sure is. Whoops. No, it isn't. Intended to be and a flag goes down. Pitts got him, but a flag goes down. 
Now we got a face mask, face mask. here. You're right. Ball game offensively for Vanderbilt has been almost nil for LSU. Great first half, but since early in the second quarter, LSU has not moved for a touchdown and only for three points. You know, Jim, that time Wickersham Red Blitz moved Gary James the back up inside. When he moved him up inside, he went out for a pass and didn't pick up the linebackers coming up, and Fitz was the man that got there. This will give them an opportunity taking the ball down to the six yard line. But since the first minute of the second quarter, LSU has but three points. But here's an opportunity for them here. Now watch. You see, see Fitz now. You see James come out of the backfield. Fitz is his man. Now the question is that is not face mask. He's got him by the side of the helmet, not by the mask. And you're allowed to do that. Let's take a look at it again. Does he have the mask? He's got the side of the helmet. Second down. Here's Hilliard looking for the first down. He's got it and a touchdown. This is LSU's night. Haven't won a game in the Southeastern Conference since November of 1982. At the moment, they're winning this one 33 to 6. Watch the move that Dalton Hilliard makes on the outside. Watch it right here. Here's the move. Bang. Back to the inside. Now outside. Everybody's caved in. Dalton Hilliard touchdown. And one. The Tantus comes in to add the extra point with Parker to hold. And that is good. 34 to 6. And Hilliard now has 93 yards on 17 carries. There's the move to the inside. Now watch Hilliard back to the outside. Everybody's on the ground. That's Young, 32 on the ground. No way he can help out. Hilliard touchdown. One week from tonight, Paul and I'll be up in Ames, Iowa. And Iowa State has a dubious pleasure. Well, if you want to play the big guys, they're going to get a big guy. Oklahoma started the day number two, playing number one, Texas. And that game, if you've not heard, a flat out 15 all time. And the Sooners move into Ames to play Iowa State, which lost to Colorado today. Our score here, 34 to 6, with 1.23 to go in the third quarter. And let us take a look now at LSU. They are at Kentucky next week. Then they come home against Notre Dame out of their conference. Then they get Ole Miss at home. Then they go on the road for Alabama and Mississippi State before they wind up here against Tulane, which beat Vanderbilt last week. Now uh, Vanderbilt next week right back into the frying pan between the hedges of Athens, Georgia to play the Bulldogs of Georgia before coming home against Ole Miss. Georgia won today. Sure did. That was a tough fought ball game of Mississippi. And now Matt, Matt DeFrank to kick it off again. Very short. Brotherspoon trying to get his footing. Picks up the ball. Gets out to about the 25 yard line, and that is all. Time running out. There's Dalton Hilliard. He's averaging, as he said, better than 116 yards a game. Right now, he's got 93. But he has shown us the moves that have made him average 160 yards a game. And 80 yards on a kickoff return. So just, he's got at least. 170 <laughs> without catching a pass tonight. First down, Page has time and just knocked away by guess who? Michael Brooks. Remember, we've got our Chevrolet player of the game offensively or defensively, one for each team. And as well as LSU is doing offensively, they're allowed for three field goals and then led by Michael Brooks. So if you're thinking who we're going to pick, keep Michael Brooks in mind. Yeah, I'll tell you something. Kirk Page is going to see Michael Brooks, number 94, in his dreams. Watch this. He's going to throw. Michael Brooks times it perfectly. 6'3", 230, knocks the ball away. Second down 10. Page fires and has his man across the way. That is Fuller. And that is a first down. Out of the 39-yard line. Ardell Fuller, the senior out of Gaffney, South Carolina, makes a sliding catch. At the 39-yard line. Kurt Page is getting nailed every time he throws the ball, Jim, and, and he knows that he's starting to throw and duck, and I don't blame him. Believe me, I don't blame him. I mean, you got, you got a guy in your face every time you throw. 
It's a tough night. Less than a minute to go in the third quarter. Page on first down. Has time here. Has his man here. That's Everett Crawford. And does he get hit there by Sean Burks, who's back in the ballgame, number 57. <laughs> John Burks is back. Look at that bench. They're not happy. Well, they were going along so well, winning the first four in a row. Then Tulane caught them in the rain last week, and our LSU has caught them and captured them thus far tonight, leading by 28 points in the last 15 seconds of the third quarter. Second down, four to go. Bullen is in and wide to the left. Page, look out. He's being pressured again. Try to get it to Everett Crawford on a screen, but Tommy Clapp put a lot of pressure. I mean, he, he, Kurt Page, does not even have time to set up for a screen. Watch Clapp, 97, is in his face. As soon as he sets up, he's got to keep retreating and retreating. Almost gets the ball to Crawford, but he has no chance. Remember, Fletcher has been taken from tackle to be put at center to start this game because Brawley is ill, and Denson, the backup tackle, has been playing for Fletcher. But they're not small people up front. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't mean to indicate or intimate that. Third down. And four to go. Hayes gets the ball out. That's not enough, though. Everett Crawford takes it out of bounds with Tony Caston there, but that's not enough. And the third quarter is over. A flag is down, but the third quarter is over, and there's the score. LSU, out of guilty of unnecessary roughness after the play, gives Vanderbilt a first down at the 38-yard line of LSU. 34 to 6, LSU leads. First down, Vanderbilt. Crawford, and Crawford, a hand is put on him. By number 94, Michael Brooks, and that caused him to kind of run downhill after picking up about six or seven yards down to the 33. A very big team. <laughs> Brooks is 6'1", 230 out of Ruston, Louisiana. As we said, he runs the, four, the 40 in 4-5, leads the club in sacks. And Bill Arnsbarger, who knows his linebackers, linebacker says he's the best he's ever seen in college. In college. Second down and five. Page has time. Oh, he's got a man open across the way. And now goes Scott. And now look what Rahaj is doing. Dragging Scott all around out of bounds. No flags thrown. I don't think Steve Rahaj, the sophomore to memory, knew where he was on the field. Well, Chuck Scott and, and LSU, they're going with their nickel defense. That's five defensive backs. Look at these. Look at the stats. 419 yards to 171. Now, what was it in the first half? They had 100. Vanderbilt had 135 yards. They only picked up 38 or 39 since then. First down ball inside the 15. He's looking. Page. Oh, my. Almost picked off by Carl Wilson. Thrown right at him. Uh, Wilson, remember, batted a pass back into the end zone back in the first half. He leaped high for that one. This one was just too good right at it. That's what you call low and away. <laughs> you just don't expect it. <laughs> yeah, we, don't, we don't even clear the line without them jumping up. You're getting a little shaky back there. Second down. Ten to go. Kelly goes to the left, and Scott comes to the right. He's got his man, but he is quickly wrestled down by Toby Caston. And for Keith Edwards, that's not enough for Vanderbilt's first down. Well, there's no question. It's everything everything for Vanderbilt right now. 34 to 6 is, is four down situations. No, no field goals, not anymore. Third down from the nine. Kurt Page has had a tough night. Going to throw again. Throws again behind his man, Scott. And that's incomplete. 
And he is now 16 for 33. This ball is not only thrown hard, but you're absolutely right, Jim. It was thrown right behind Chuck Scott, who is an excellent receiver. Now watch Page. He can feel pressure. He fires the ball, and it's coming to the inside. Actually, Scott should have had the ball. It has not been the Commodore's night. It is fourth down. Five yards will get them a first down. Nine yards will get them a touchdown. Page. Look out. Look out. He doesn't come close. DeBrock gets his second sack. LSU takes over. And it's a loss from the nine all the way back to the 22-yard line. DeBrock was there to make the tackle. If he didn't make the tackle, guess who else was there? Michael Brooks. Well, that's a good call. <laughs> here comes Michael Brooks on this side. Now the back is taking him on Woods. Watch it. There's DeBrock, and here comes Michael off of the block, just in to help out to make sure he's down. Stay away from him. DeBrock was there. That's the fifth sack of the night against Kurt Payne. This is low. Might have taken too much time here. Whoa, whoa, somebody got hit in the face. Who got hit in the face? And that's not the reason they call time. It's offside instead, charged. Garland Jean-Baptiste. Look at this final score. Well, a lot of people said this was going to be a great ball game. Auburn won in the last seconds last year. I don't know the details of this, but it was within less than 50 seconds tonight, and Auburn does it again. Now, that means that Auburn is still cruising along in contention and in the southeastern conference they are of course two and all this is not a southeastern conference game and lsu should they win tonight and they lead 34 to 6 they would be 1 0 -oh and 1 just a shade behind auburn auburn off to a rough start losing bo jackson beginning to write itself now wickersham passes low for glenn holt the freshman out of miami florida at the 20 yard line and it'll be second down and 15 from the 17 yard line there's the clock that's the situation We've got some new people coming in the ball game. You're going to have a lot more new people coming in the ball game before it's all over. Ryan Kitchen. Yeah, he's in it. Tight, he's end. tight end, number 49. Neither team is that deep, but we will see some other people, I would imagine. And going straight in is Scott and John Batiste. Out of St. Martinsville, Louisiana. And it'll be third down and short. Now, Jean Baptiste is his last name. That's right. Well, he's, he's his first name. The Mister, the way he's running, will be in front of all of that. What the next ten days we have? Oklahoma next Saturday night, and then BYU with another thrill of the day to remain unbeaten. A week from Thursday night here on ESPN. And here, oh, it is picked off, and there he goes to the races, and that's the man Fitz. The good Falcon linebacker, the sophomore out of Madison. That is his second interception. But that's a touchdown. <laughs> you bet. Take a look at Ricochet is not very happy about what he does, but just take a look at what, what Fitz does. Here comes Fitz. There's a secondary. They're playing pass. And he just picks it off. He's in front of Holt, picks it off in the into the end zone. There's no one out there. It's not a good pass to throw because you don't have anyone to protect you. Take a look at it. Look at him out to the outside. I got it. I got this. I got it. Goodbye. Thank you. Don't have to run hard. And the defense for Vanderbilt has scored a touchdown. Go, They'll go for two. Why not? But they do have 12 minutes and five seconds left on the clock. The quality and value that make up today's Chevrolet. I have never ever seen this before, but just moments ago, LSU and Vanderbilt both lined up on the wrong side. LSU was going from left to right. Vanderbilt was just scored from left to right. Had lined up to receive from right to left. No other to kick off. I'd never seen that. 34-20. Sam Martin is the deep man, and everybody knows they've got to try to get the ball here. Last time, showing that they were going to have an onside kick. They kicked it deep. They kind of just got to do it here. Oh, look, they use a different man, and I think they're going to get Oh, they're going to get it. Instead of an Anderson kick, they had another man kick it, and that caught him by surprise, and Fitz, who just scored the touchdown, recovers the ball at the 47. 
Now the question is, was the first man, Fitz gets the ball, but did the first man touch the ball before it went across the 50? Now let's take a look at it. The inside guy, right here, does he touch it? No, he does not. There's Fitz on the play, and that was Young, 32. Manuel Young did not touch the ball. Fitz gets it. It's a picture of our producer. Who's and look him? here. Is that Mark Ratcher we see there instead of Kirk Page? It is at quarterback. It's score 34 12. And the sophomore is there and throwing and under throws his man across the way, Chuck Scott. With him is Gidley. All right, watch this. Here's the kick now. Now, watch what Manuel Young, he knows it's got to go 10 yards. He just gets away from the ball, gets in the way of the defenders. That's Sykes down there, number four, making a block. Second down of 10. Ratcher had only thrown five times before that last pass out of Richfield, Ohio. And Page is through for the night of him. Ratcher, the only clean uniform. Oh, look at this out there. There it is off his fingertip. Can you believe that? Ratcher laid it right on the money. And it looks like Ardell Fuller had it, but the senior from Gaffney, South Carolina, did not hold on to it. Jeff Ratcher could not have thrown the ball any better than he throws it here. Take a look. And he's got Ardell Fuller wide open down the field. It hits him right in the hand. The man sets up. Look at the follow through. Perfect. Here comes the ball. Fuller, all you have to do is catch it, young man. Oops. Did okay. not do it. Jeffrey Dale, number four down there. Third down and ten. Ratcher must throw again. Brooks is a man blitzing, and he's going to go down. He did not put him down, but forced him up, and Henry Thomas put him down. <laughs> and it's fourth down. Has this been the Michael Brooks show or not? Well, this has been an LSU show, I guarantee you. The only touchdown scored of the evening on an interception return. Six sacks tonight. The defense has done extremely well. The defense has given up only six points to Vanderbilt. And here's Ricky Anderson, who has at least given them field position or gotten them out of bad field position with his booming punts of better than 50 yards a shot. Jeffrey, is, Jeffrey Dale is the man of deep. Oh, he drills it. Not a great kick, but he's going for the sidelines, and it takes a low hop at the eight-yard line. <laughs> and Dale picks it up and runs head on. Gets out to about the 15. 10.49 to go. Last quarter, 34-12 LSU. Playing for the mighty Citadel, which tonight rolled over Western Carolina by point. They blew their <laughs> socks off. Look at that, 34 <laughs> points. They give up 33 as long as they can score 34. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Our score here is 34-12. Goes down. That is Jean Petit carrying the ball. Clock all against Vanderbilt now, running down toward the ten and a half minute mark. See that man there? Bill Arnsbarger. Well, when I was at Youngstown, Ohio, in Ursuline High School, he tried to recruit me at Kentucky. And I was supposed to go down for a weekend, and I got an appendix attack when I was playing basketball, and Al Davis stole me away. I bet he did. <laughs> you begged him, right? <laughs> Look at this. That is Jean Petit running the ball again across the 30-yard line to the 33. And we'll begin to see more names now pour into the both sides of the line of scrimmage. I know we're not going to see Gus Piazza. Are we? Maybe he's a nose guard. I would doubt that. He's certainly <laughs> not a quarterback. Uh, Gus is the man that, when they come to Baton Rouge, comes up with such things as fried oysters, boiled shrimp, fried catfish. Just keep on cooking, Gus. He made our all Don't have, do. have to play football. <laughs> what a beaten down here is terrific. And Alice, you can play football too, can't they? That's Martin. There in the ball, Martin in there. We don't. We will not see anymore. I don't think Gary James. Sam is a freshman out of New Orleans. 5'11", 180. Eric Martin did not have a great night, but good enough. Remember when Ardenau threw to him? 
setting up a touchdown. There goes Jean Baptiste again, and he gets across the 35 to the 36. A lot of rain at the beginning of the game, which surprised a lot of LSU faithful because it's not supposed to rain on a Saturday night here at LSU, but it soon stopped. We've got nine minutes to go in this game. 34 to 12. Looks as though LSU is going to be 4-0 and 1 and heading out to Kentucky where Arnsberger used to coach. Here's the score by quarters of LSU and Vandy tonight. And the six by Vandy, of course, was on the interception by Armando Fitt. And there's Jean Baptiste again. Check that. That's Sam Martin. 23, not 43. Vanderbilt tonight apparently will be four and two after winning the first four in a row. And they've got to go on down to play Georgia. Vanderbilt had a great moment earlier this year when they won their Southeastern Conference game their first in two years when they knocked off Alabama in Tuscaloosa. And now LSU is about to win its first Southeastern Conference game since 1982 here at home. Play Parker to kick the ball away and fourth down and five. Clock continues to run, 8-10 to go. Ooh. Almost blocked. Manuel Young just let it roll dead at the 25-yard line. 7.58 to go, 4-12 LSU. But up 34 to 12, and yet many of them have decided, many of the 78,003 who are here decided to stay to the bitter end. Despite the outcome, can no longer be in doubt. Only the wet ones left. Mark Ratcher sends Bullen out to the left. Ratcher had a sure six a while ago. Now flips the ball out here to Crawford. And Crawford gets across the 30-yard line, fights to about the 32, and will be second down and three. Vanderbilt in the second half is minus 18 yards in rushing the football. Ratcher's is coming on his three or five. But they're winning the second half, though. Nine-seven, I think. That time, that time they threw a screen pass out here to Crawford. Crawford had four blockers in front of him, Jim, and ran back into the hug, number seven, instead of getting back to the outside where he had people to help him. Buck is running down. They're wiping off the football. Here's Ratcher. And on the far sideline, that is Joe Kelly. Good. Pearson was a defender, and the fans want more. They don't want that pass to be allowed as a catch. Well, Joe Kelly did a great job. He dragged his back foot as he went out. In college football, you only have to have one foot in bounds when you catch the ball. As you take a look at the rushing yardage for LSU in the second half, the minus 18 for Vanderbilt, remember that front three of LSU is freshman, sophomore, sophomore. Michael Brooks at linebacker to sophomore. Here's Ratcher putting a deep. Oh my, there is Kelly. And he's out of bounds. Uh, Gidry on the strong corner is a freshman. Jefferson on the weak side corner is a sophomore. And it looks as though Bill Arnbarger not only has a good defense, but the makings of a defense for some years to come. Certainly does. Look at now, here's Kelly down there. Ratcher is. is uh, throwing the ball that's twice they've dropped the ball Kelly had he caught the ball he was in bounds he drops the football and they also had another drop by Fuller second down and ten can't run the ball just got to keep putting it up throws it out here and off the hand of the intended receiver Scott and he throw fly well, he gets nailed after he tries to catch the ball by Kevin Good Gidry, number 27, and he hits Scott in the back. The ball was high. Now, see, I don't know whether they're going to call Spearing or not on this because Gidry, because Scott has his hand on the ball. All he's doing is playing the man. I don't believe that this should be a penalty. It well, is a personal foul. It's a personal foul. It is not interference. No, no, no. no not interference because Gidry hits Scott after. After, he, after the ball, but the ball goes off his hands. Now take a look at it. He's right to throw on the ball. Here it comes. Watch this. He touches the ball. Now uh, they call Spirit. That's just a good play, Jim. Scott said, I'll get you. That is Steve Rahaj, a sophomore to Metairie, who was a quarterback, and yet in checking 
The LSU roster, he is the one that is listed as a hitter, and he hit Scott. And the flag was thrown. Whether you agree or not, the flag was thrown, and it is a penalty. Tell you one thing, Gidry is the man that, that, that hit Scott that time, Jim. And and I'll tell you right now, if I was a defensive coach, I would like to have that man make that play every single time and worry about the flag later on because I thought it was a good hit, and so did the fans. Gidry, the freshman out of Lake Charles. We got a couple of freshmen back there. Now Hobley is trying to get everybody quiet so they can hear what's going on, and now they're stepping it off. <laughs> Hobley saying to the official, hey, "Wait, wait, where are you going?" <laughs> all lined up to play. Yeah, now, yeah. now Lippert's going to say, what is this? You're right. Hobley lined up his 15 yards deep normally, and all of a sudden he wants the crowd to cool down, and here comes the official running by him with the ball. So wait a minute. Hobley still wants an explanation from Robert I.A., the you referee. Bet. <laughs> it's got to be a weird feeling for a defensive back to line up, get ready to play, and all of a sudden the official comes running by you with the ball. He got to straighten up. Well, Hobley is content. Not content, but at least he understands. Miami running away from Cincinnati. They can climb into the top ten after this week. Their last game of the year is with Boston College. Here's Ratcher back, blitz is on. Ratchet's got the toe. Oh, look at this. It may be intercepted in the end zone and is by Hobley. Now he feels better. That's his third interception of the year. Hobley just wanted to get in better field position, Jim. That's the man they picked as an All-American before the season started. Lifford Six. Hobley. 6.37 to go. All right, here comes Ratchet. He's going to roll out to his right. And is that Joe Kelly in the end zone? I can't see numbers anymore. And this Hobley's playing safety. He's playing the free safety, waiting. Ratcher gets nailed. Watch this. Look at Hobley. He's sitting back in the end zone, waiting, waiting, and bang. And that was Joe Kelly, number six. The ball was intended in. Kevin Gidry was also back there. We have a new quarterback. It is Doug Powell. He gives the ball to Jean Baptiste. There's a fumble on the play, and Vanderbilt gets it back. Oh, well, just like that, Doug Powell, a sophomore to Houston, comes in, hands the ball to Jean Baptiste. It is fumbled on the exchange, and Vanderbilt's got it. All right, here's Jean Baptiste really never gets the ball in his hand. It's slipping out right now, and, and he's trying to stop to get back to the ball. No chance to do that. Vanderbilt gets the ball back, and the defense, I can promise you, they were all ready to sit down and grab a little water, relax, and they're back out there. Goes into the corner and Kelly is there. Touchdown. They've been dropping them all night long on Page and now Ratcher and Mark Ratcher hits Joe Kelly. Pearson defending could not stop it. Kelly downfield using his left arm just a tad, just a tad on Pearson, but he gets himself between the ball and the defender. See that left arm pushing off on Pearson? Touchdown. Person had no chance at the ball. Kelly played it beautifully. 34-18. They'll go for two again to make it 34-20. If they can, two touchdowns in 6-23. They could tie or go ahead. There's Ratcher. They need this. And he's got this. Across the way, stepping out is Kelly, who got the touchdown. He gets the two points. And it is 34-20. LSU leads. Now you know when we come back, the question is, last time it came to the left side of LSU. Will they kick to the right side this time, or will Anderson himself kick it? That's what LSU's trying to figure out. Uh, a little mix up in the middle. Look at nobody outside of the hash marks. Now they'll spread. Here they go. Here they Whoops. go, running all around. Now let's see if Anderson's going to kick it. He's going to kick it. And this time this is Hilliard tracking it down at the three. Last time he came up with an 80-yard return. And this time he's not going to be so successful. Paul pointed out something to me that I had just overlooked. Ratcher within there. Kelly dropped the ball. It could have been six points. 
Scott dropped a ball that could have been six points, and those were on separate drives. That's the difference of the ball game of 14 points, possibly, and right now it is 34 to 20, a difference of 14 points. And that long one down the middle, middle to Fuller. That's unbelievable. You know, even though LSU has dominated this ball game, you think it's about that thing. There's Hilliard, and they'll stick to the ground if they can. Getting it from the 24 to the 30-yard line. You notice now, no new names. They got back to first teams back in the ball game. A lot of time, six minutes to go and counting. And the Bills, you can say one thing about George McIntyre's men. Down as they were at one time, 27-3. They have never given up, and they have come back, and Mark Ratchett looked very good. Again, Hilliard, oh, look at this dandy little move to pick up the first down onto the 40-yard line. Hilliard, for that 100-yard mark. He's got to have it now. I know he's got 100. There he is, 109, Jim. 109 yards, he's been averaging 116. Dalton Hilliard, watch his feet, watch the balance. Not only James with great balance, but Dalton Hilliard, watch this. He's stumbling, but he maintains his balance, gets back to the outside. One thing he didn't want to do was go out of bounds, but Vanderbilt forced him out. That stops the clock. Out of those in, Eric Martinson, they've gone back as Paul said, same old names, except there is Jean Petit, who is still in there, and picks up some yardage as the clock clicks below the 530 mark. Well, LSU had last week off after having beaten Southern California at Southern Cal 23 to 3. Arizona scared the Dickens out of LSU down there before they won it 27 to 26. And of course, in their first game, Florida's second game, that was a 21 21 all time. Second down and eight. And Jean Batiste carries the ball, trying to get the first down, and he's going to be stopped in the market at midfield. And that should be just the nose of the ball shy of the first down. <laughs> the fans want a roughing. Fans also want a first down. You bet. Kitchen comes in as another tight end as anticipated as third and just inches to go. Rock is still running. 435 next weekend, remember, Saturday night, Oklahoma. One week from Thursday night, Bobby Bosco and undefeated Brigham Young. Oklahoma was also undefeated after today. They were tied. There's the first down. Kitchen carries for the first down. I know with a 14-point lead that LSU, they are not going to throw the, I don't think they're going to throw the football, but I can promise you one thing. Take a look at, at Vandy's defense. They're playing one-on-one -on -one up on the outside, playing one-on-one -on, -one on Eric Martin and Fontenot. And if LSU just ran a play action pass. They can have a touchdown. Remember the Chevrolet College Football Report after the game with all the scores of the day. Bob Lee will be with you. He's got them. They are giving it to John uh, Hilliard and John Batiste, who's ever not. They don't call them fullbacks here. I got to stop that in that running back spot. And that's how, of course, it was Hilliard. Well, I have a running back and a tailback, uh, which is Dalton Hilliard or Jean Baptiste. Then they have a tailback, which is either Gary James or Ratchet. And the tailbacks, or the tailback, is bigger than the running back. But he's not a fullback. That's right. Boy, did we get that straight. I like well, now, Bill Arnsberger just said, I couldn't tell either one of them he's a fullback <laughs> when they can run like that. He said, well, I made one of them a running back and the other a tailback. Second down and six. Oh, they lost the football, and I believe Vanderbilt's got it back again at the 46-yard line. Hilliard lost the football, and George McIntyre is thrilled because the ball game is still possible, possible, especially the way Ratcher's playing. I think it's Carl Jordan, 99. He's a nose tackle. He just takes off. I can't see the number because of the dirt. Well, watch it. That is 99. Jordan, he hits the quarterback, Rickerson, just as the ball's coming out. Hilliard, Hilliard never got to it. And then Steve Wade, number 90, got the ball, I believe. Richard Stahl, I'll argue with you on that. I think Stahl got it. Was it Stahl got the ball? I can't, I can't see. Yeah, they mess up those numbers. It's difficult to see even when the camera comes in close on it. That's why I like the mud. You gotta love the mud. First down, Ratcher has to throw. 3-10 to go. Whips it out there, and that is Edwards, and Edwards steps away, and is finally bumped out of bounds by Hobley. 
But that's the first down at the 39 with 3.01 left. That's Vanderbilt. I checked this clock a little bit because when the guy goes out of bounds, it runs a few more seconds off. All right, a little slip pass from Ratcher out to outside to Edwards, but watch his balance. Remember, last year led the nation 97 receptions. Good balance. He is a running back. He gets smashed downfield by Hobley, but picked up the first down. Ratcher's done a good job. Softwater, Richfield, Ohio. There's a little shovel pass right there. That's Crawford. And Crawford is tackled by Michael Brooks after picking up nine yards down to the 31. Second and short clock running. When Michael Brooks puts his arms on you. He's got you. This is, this is good. They can do almost anything they want to do now, passing the ball. Little screens, dump stuff. Tell you what, and you know it. If it's a quick score here, this stadium is going to get alive because there's a diving cry by Edwards. No good. Because then, with the onside kick, Vanderbilt would clearly have a chance. But they've got to score, and they've got to score quickly. Jimmy had the feeling at 231, Vanderbilt two timeouts, and as you as you said, a quick score. A lot of people left here a little bit too early. Not too many. They don't <laughs> leave. They don't leave Tiger Stadium a lot. Some of them. Brent. Uh, here's the situation now for Vanderbilt. Remember now that the clock, and I'm going to repeat it again, stops on a first down to move the chains. Wouldn't be a bad call here to run a running play. Third down and short. They're running a running play. They've got the first down. And that is Crawford getting up from under the grasp of Ricky Chapman. That's right. Get your people up on the line of scrimmage. Get your call from the center. Make the call at the line. Get everybody lined up. Here comes Kelly back in. And you know they're going to look at Kelly, number six. Black is down, I believe, at the 25 ball. Piling on Crawford after he after the ball. He got hit ahead as another 15-yard penalty. Now watch it. We're going to see. Look at the left of your screen. Now Crawford on the running play right up the center. Good blocking up front. And then when he's on the ground, Brooks, is that Burks? Sean Burks, 57? I think, it's, I think it's Chapman, 37. 37? And he speared him on the ground. That's a ruling. Here's Ratcher now inside the 15. Oh my. At one time, it was 34 to 6. Now it is 34 to 20. And Vanderbilt after the fumble looking for a quick score. Ratcher slips but gets the ball out here. And one out of bounds on this side is Scott. But it is second down from the five yard line. You know he beat the man that hit him in the back, Kevin Gidry. <laughs> hey, 2.15, Jim. Two time oh, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> and especially the way they handled, the way George McIntyre's team handles those onside kicks, Bill Arnsberg has got to be concerned if they get in here because he's not so sure he gets the ball back. I'm going to stay and watch it. Ratchet throws in the end zone, but he's out of the end zone. That is Kelly again out of the end zone. It's third down. Kelly is making a living out there on Mr. Pearson, number 25, James Pearson. You see Kelly. This is Joe Kelly, number six. Watch this little out move. Pearson slips. The ball is thrown too far wide. Pearson already had him beat. Now, wait a minute, Jim. The thing is control. His right foot drag. Can we see that again? Well, let's watch the play first. Maybe okay. academic. All right, look at Watch his, watch his back foot. That's, does he have control? The back foot is dragging. It's inbound. Third down. Pitch. Crawford, touchdown! Well, a freshman out of Huntsville, Alabama, makes it a close, close ball game. I would assume they go for the one here, although Ratcher stays on, and go for the two later, or go for the two now, and also the two later. Bill Arnsberg has got to be concerned. They're going to go for the one now and the two if they get the chance later. Watch Crawford cut back to the inside. Good blocking up front. Crawford breaks two tackles into the end zone. Michael Brooks is, oh, Michael Brooks let him know that he was there. 2-0-3 left. Even if he misses it, it can be tied and he did not miss it. And it is 34-27. Stand by. Will they try the onside kick or not? kick it away and try to hold them are they going to try for 
The possibility of an onside kick and get the ball back. Well, we'll wait. The decision has been made. I think they'll kick the ball away and not the onside kick. To get him in the hole, they have the timeouts. No, you're not right. That's right, I'm not and right. And that's Fontenot making the biggest play of the night, even though he scored a touchdown and pulled a pass and took the ball to the five-yard line. Two minutes to go, and Wickersham and company need only to run up the clock if they can. That's why you have receivers up there, Fontenot number four. You look at that, he snags the ball out of the air and then gets down right away. Don't take a chance and fumble. I just thought if they kick the ball deep, there are really no blockers to block, but they can pin him back with Anderson's leg, pin him back there, take your timeouts, use them up, and if, if LSU has to punt, at least they'll get decent field position. If they have to punt here, they're going to have to go like 90 yards. That was an option that they did not take. Not saying that what they did was a bad option at all, but that's why they're in a huddle on the sidelines very quickly. Vanderbilt calls timeout. Hilliard carried the ball, and Vanderbilt wants timeout with 1.53 left in this 34-27 ball game. Now, well, let us see. 34-27. That means that LSU has allowed Vanderbilt to score 21 unanswered points. LSU, as we said, tied Florida, rolled over Wichita State. Arizona scared the Dickens out of them. They dominated USC at the Coliseum. They're winning at the moment, 34-27. Next week, they're at Kentucky. And then they've got Notre Dame back here, Mississippi back here, on the road against Alabama and Mississippi State, and then Tulane, which defeated Vanderbilt last week. And Vanderbilt is hoping that it's not two weeks in a row of getting so far behind that their gallant comeback efforts just is not enough. Remember, they're down 17 to 3 to Tulane last week and came back and lost that ball game 27 23. 20 to the 21 in the fourth quarter. 24 to 6. Now, remember, Jim, at the end of the half when I kept saying, LSU, they're not going to sit on the ball and they're going to go and try to score because they know the potent offense of Vanderbilt. Yes. Those three points <laughs> made him very, very large. Second down and bouncing around is Hilliard. First down. Hilliard bumped out of bounds, but he's got a first down at the 26. And that should bring him up to about his average or above his average running the ball per ball game. He's been averaging 116 yards plus per game. All right, Dalton Hilliard, watch. He stops at the line of scrimmage. Bang, right in the middle. And then Dalton Hilliard bounces to the outside. It's a foot race. That's Manuel Young, 32, chasing him. Pushes him out of bounds. Hilliard with 144 yards, plus the 80-yard kickoff return, remember? Not a bad night. No, sir. Give the ball back again to Hilliard and gets down to the 20-yard line. A pickup of six yards, so that should make him at the 150-yard mark. Did he, has he caught a pass? Do we They've thrown to him. And I remember the two behind him on one occasion. But we'll have to check. Well, Vanderbilt has just taken their last time out, and that's all LSU has to do now is just sit on the ball. Remember, college football report with Bob Lee coming up. A Chevrolet College Football Report. Well, if LSU does win this, as you take a look at the reminder about the College Football Report, if LSU does win this, of course, it's the first victory in the Southeastern Conference in nearly two years. They would remain undefeated. The bad thing for Vanderbilt is that they will have lost their second in a row and a game in the Southeastern Conference. The good thing is George McIntyre has got to be proud of his men being down 34 to 6 to make this a ball game where it's got the LSU fans and team and coaching staff gulping a little bit with a minute and a half to go. And I'll tell you one other thing that we learned in this game tonight. Coach Arnsberger, I bet you when he's got the lead, he's not going to pull his team in the third quarter and start putting some recruits in. Boy, <laughs> it all changed around there, didn't it? It sure did. Now Hilliard's going to run again and got a first down, and that may just be it. Well, I could just sit on the ball now. They can let it run out. Vanderbilt tonight has total running the ball, 44 yards total. Credit that defense. The defense of LSU for three quarters really did a number on Vanderbilt's running game. Of course, you know, things turn around the game. It gives you an idea. A lot of people might have turned this off. 
at halftime saying this is a blowout. I hope a lot of people didn't. Oh, so do I. But I'm just saying those things in college football, any football game. Bumble set up change. one score, as we know. Fitz carried a intercepted pass in. And Wickerson just goes, well, nobody's hit him yet. He hasn't <laughs> gone down yet. But that's good for him because time continues to run. There's George McIntyre, coach of the year two years ago. Got to get everybody back home now and say, well, gang, that's two in a row. And here's the good news. We go down to play Georgia, Georgia. Yeah, that's, that's good news. <laughs> that's the good news. Wickersham just went up to the official and said, why did you blow the whistle? You could hear the whistles being blown, and, and no one touched him. He was just standing back there dancing. This should be the last play, because Vanderbilt, after Wickersham touches his knee or whatever he does, barring a fumble, they'll just let it run out. Now, here's where she's just playing touch his knee. He's not going to. He's going to let time run a little bit. Now they got him. Doesn't make a difference because he's going to run out now. Well, LSU, at one time, was up 34 to 6, but an interception and a fumble recovery. And Mark Ratcher and company came back for 21 fourth quarter points, and LSU wins it by seven. Their first Southeastern Conference win in almost two years, 34 27. I like that, I, I, but you've got to admire one thing, Vanderbilt's, Vanderbilt's determination to come back. All right, Paul and I'll be back in a moment at Tiger Stadium. They're happy here. They're going away a winner.